within the town sponsorships and fees after we hear a, a presentation by Rob Miller and I'd like to move item 13 right before number four. Okay, do I have a second on approving the agenda with that change? A second. Okay, discussion from the board? On that, just only on that change? Yeah, on that change. <clears throat> well, I'm a little wondering there is nothing in the packet for the only thing we have in the packet that I think was previously discussed is actually associated with Mr. Miller's um, proposal so but I agree with you I was a little concerned that we are potentially setting a precedent before we've created a policy but I'm also concerned that I think it's a discussion for the new board yes okay so um, oh, yes. the new board is they they began on removal. What item? They don't. So outgoing board business is what everything that we continued. Okay. Now, if we want the new board to address it, all those items need to get okay. moved down after or we move up the uh, swearing in of the trustees above the items that we want them. It seems to make more sense to uh, move them right at the beginning of where the incoming board comes in, as Paige has suggested. So, in other words, the new, the new board would have that this right. So, I'm, so, but so we have the things that were continued were um, facility in, the facility inspection, BDS Hydro, Rob Wait, those, Miller. Those are fine. Let, let me restate. Okay, that would be good. Okay. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion. All right, there? we have okay. So we have a motion then. A second. Oh, okay. So we either rescind the motion or we'll start it over. Who is the second? Jeff, do you Jeff. want to rescind? Yeah, we can rescind the motion. Okay. All right. So One's let me one. take a second stab at it. I'm sorry. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we move item number four. And uh, right after item number 13. Okay. All right. Otherwise, I'd like to make a motion we approve the agenda with that change. Okay. So, uh, discussion, or do I have a second? I will second that. Okay. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> Let's vote on this one and then we'll do any other okay. changes. Thank you. Yeah. So, <laughs> all in favor of uh, moving item four to after, after item 13? Is there opportunity for discussion? Oh, yeah, if you want, go ahead. I, I just. Uh, I'm going to take my opportunity to make a comment because I may not have one uh, later. And that is, um, I, I agree with our conversation last time that uh, a policy is needed in regards to uh, events in the town. However, I don't think, I think we should be careful about not slowing down the planning of those events in lieu of creation of a policy. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Yes. Um, I also would like to see it move, but I actually have a proposal to propose when we get to that that might take care of this okay. this particular situation, and then we can continue creating a legacy, because um, I know Mr. Rob is really concerned about getting this approved so he gets posters finished. Mm -hmm. So I have a personal proposal that I would All right. provide well, there. Well, yeah, okay. But, Right now, we're just discussing the agenda. So right, no, but what I mean is agenda. maybe leave it on the agenda. And oh, I, it is on the agenda. Right, but I could probably it. take care of it, and then we could talk about legacy. Well, let's deal with okay. the agenda, one thing at a okay. time. So we have a motion and a second. Move to item number four after item number 13. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Jeff, are you going to vote? I, I, I. Oh, okay. All right. So, any other changes to the agenda? Yes. Um, I would like to suggest that we move item seven down for incoming board business simply because okay. I think it might be of interest for the new board. They okay. may have some thoughts on the facility inspection policy that, All right. that we have not heard. I thought that they. So we can move that to uh, item number after 14. Okay, so you have a motion to move item number seven. After number 14, do I have a second? A second. Any discussion? All right. All in favor of moving item number seven to after number 14? Aye. 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 Okay. All opposed? None. All right. Next. Get this in order. And so we have an amended agenda now. So can I get a motion to approve the agenda with the two changes made? I'd like to make a motion we approve the agenda with the changes we voted on. All right, you have a second. Second. Discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that. We have an approved agenda. All right, next up is announcements. Does anyone have any announcements? Yes, I'd like to make an announcement. Yes. Um, I've noticed a lot of vitriol uh, dedicated towards staff. And in the 30 plus years of working in a number of uh, environments, many of them women dominated, and I'm going to get some flack for this statement, but I've seen viciousness on the part of women toward other women in leadership. I would hope that that's not what we're dealing with here. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, I do have an announcement. So we are going to have a strategic planning session on June 25th. If you or anyone you know would like to take part in deciding where we want the town to go in the next 10 to 20 years, please, please come to the strategic planning session. It is going to be a large community event. So I urge everyone to come. All right. Next, we have recognition of. Question from the audience. Oh, I'm sorry. In a moment. Yes. Ms. Patterson? Time for that event? Um, it's not dead set yet. It'll probably be running um, maybe 10 to 4. There will be a lunch provided. So, but I will absolutely let everyone know as soon as that time has been set. All right. So, next is recognition of visitors and guests. I'd like to welcome everyone to the meeting tonight. We are very pleased to have you in attendance. We do welcome your comments, questions, and suggestions. To address the board, please raise your hand and wait to be called on by the mayor. And come to the podium, just over there. State your name and the street on which you live. If you are on Zoom, on Zoom, please use the raise hand function to be recognized. If you're in Zoom on the phone, use star nine to raise your hand, star six to mute and unmute. All comments and questions should be addressed to the mayor only, and three minutes per person will be allowed for all public comment. It will help the board to hear and understand your comments if they are clear, concise, and respectful. Please present factual information. Personal attacks of any kind are not in order. During the public comment period, you may speak on any subject. When speaking on agenda items, please keep your statements directly about the agenda item being discussed. Until you are called on by the mayor, please be respectful of those around you and those who have the floor by remaining silent. Please take any side conversations out of the room. All right, would anyone like to address the board on something that is not on the agenda? Yes, Ms. Patterson. There's no video. To oh, well, it is on this side. So we may just have a screen problem. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Watson. Um, hi, I'm Aaron. Do I just do it here? Podium. <laughs> it just got moved, Aaron. 
Hi, my name is Aaron Watson. I live at 38620 Pitkin Road, and I'm the co-founder of Dark Skies Peonia, um, which is why I'm here today. This week is International Dark Sky Week, and so across the world there's celebration of dark skies, um, which is reducing artificial light at night. Um, Right, tonight we have a stargazing event at Volunteer Park, so we'll be there till 10 o'clock. You're all welcome to come. Um, just, it looks like it's clearing up, actually. Um, also, this month in Colorado is Lights Out for Bird Migration Month, so the governor has recognized the impact light pollution has on migrating birds. It's, it's actually devastating. Um, so it's great to see some policy coming forth. Um, and there's also a, a bill, a house bill that's moving through legislation right now. Um, Senator Donovan, Representative McCluskey, and Representative Catlin are sponsoring that. And so really we're seeing a lot of uh, movement and policy coming for Dark Skies. And so we have an ordinance. The, um, we've been working with the board on this. I believe, Mr. Conklin, um, you have the ordinance now. And I'm just here to, to uh, let the new board members know and the old board members that Dark, Spy, Dark Skies Peonia is very active and we're energized and we're ready to do what it needs to happen to, to get this ordinance through and, and make Peonia a certified Dark Sky town. So we're really close um, and yeah, I just want to offer um, whatever help we can provide and we're here and we're ready to go. So thank you so much for hearing us and um, yeah, with all the work the board has done up to this point, we really appreciate it. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Yes, Ms. Watson. Um, Suzanne Watson, no relation. <laughs> Somewhere back in genealogy, but um, I, I want to ask, I submitted an extensive comment um, along with the Dark Skies Ordinance, and I'd like to make sure um, Jeff Conklin um, is able mm -hmm. to look at it as he reviews the ordinance. I was concerned about it not being placed in the land development regulations. Um, and I also want to mention to the board, I know, you know, some people might poo-poo dark skies, but the something that I think is really shows how concerning um, light can be is some of the greenhouse situations we have around town. You've not, I've never seen anything like it. It's not even like a house with light coming out of the windows when it lights up all the trees around the neighborhood all night so people can grow, for instance, their pot plants. Um, I, I would almost encourage you to look at a nuisance ordinance for that um, so maybe it can be um, ameliorated a little bit more quickly than through um, dark skies because that truly is a nuisance. It's not only light, light as dark skies, but it is like barking dogs, um, weeds, junk, um, light pollution, light trespass, because um, it's pretty egregious. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Watson. Anyone else? Yes, Ms. Moret. So, um, my name is Mary Riley. I live at 2 and 11 and a half Niagara in Paonia, Colorado, and I'm here to talk about an incident that happened to me on Sunday evening. Um, I have prepared a, uh, so that I can give you the story here, and it will be more understood as to what has happened and what has taken place. So I also have a packet up here, and I will guide you through these pictures. If you give me a second here. First of all, before we get started, I'm, I want to say that I'm not out. I'm not here out to get anybody. I am just here because of what happened to me, and I really, really am upset about it. Okay. So, the first picture here, of course, Friday in the windstorm, uh, we had, I had a major tree fall on Friday evening. As you can see in the first picture, the tree snapped off and came right across my car and into my yard, okay? 
The next picture is also a picture of the, the huge amount of tree that was on my car. The third picture is what I was dealing with that was in my yard. As well as the next picture, and the next one, and the next one. Now, this one right here is happens to be the picture, uh, no, that's also in my yard. Okay, now, with this picture right here, yes, this one right here. This is the emergency branch tree that was in question, okay? The next picture shows how little of the alley it actually took up, okay, which was right in front of me. The last picture shows you that the tree, that branch, was wedged tightly into the V at the top of the tree, okay? And then, of course, the last picture is just a picture up above showing you that all this was in my yard, okay? So the majority was in my yard and on my car, okay? I've shown you pictures of exactly what was in the alley. All right. So the first thing and our priority, because we couldn't even access the alley without getting on our hands and knees and crawling under the tree, okay? Our first priority was to clear that and then get the tree off of my car. Okay, I am. I had a great person stop by, Jack Farrell, who is a friend of mine. He saw that I was. We were in trouble. He came down and he said, "How can I help?" I told him. I said, "I would love your help." He said, "I'm a tree guy." I. He brought his chainsaw. He started helping us clear this up. As you can see, this was monumental. Okay, so the three minutes is up. Would the board allow Ms. Riley to continue? I'd like to make a motion she be allowed to continue. She's okay. pretty upset about yeah. this. Do yes. I want to give seven. her the pro appropriate time. Okay, yes. Thank Thank you. Okay. Six. Six. All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay, as you can see, I was tasked with a monumental, monumental, not to mention the fact that I have major damage to my car, major damage in my yard. I'm the, my car is not covered that it's coming out of my pocket. I already have the 18, I've already had just for one part of the car. It's already costing me $1,800. It will be a lot more by the time I'm finished here, okay? I was absolutely overwhelmed. Jack came in, we worked as hard as we could to get everything cleaned up. We could not remove that branch that was in the alley until my car was either towed out of there or able to be pushed out. I'm 73 years old. My partner is 69. This has been so devastating to him, he can't, he's just checked out. I am so tired. I am exhausted. I am so stressed out. I don't have this kind of money. Thank you. I and I'm depressed at all of this. Now, by Sunday afternoon, we had gotten it to probably around three o'clock. We finally gotten it to a place where we could start the next morning dealing with that branch. Jack was charging me $50 an hour to do all the groundwork. He, he told me that he would have to get up in the tree because of the wedge. The branch was wedged up in there. I knew that too. I could clearly see that. He said for the tree work, he would charge me $75 an hour to go up in that tree. He is a excellent tree person, okay? So around five o'clock on Sunday afternoon, the town of Peony shows up with a person called Mason Babcock. And they told me 
that I had to have that branch removed immediately. Immediately. And that it was a emergency access uh, problem. That no emergency could be, a, it, it was blocking an emergency access. Now if you'll go to the map that on the next, at the, at the bottom here, I've, I've done a map. You can see where my house is. You can see where the tree fell. You can see that little area where it uh, looks, that's where the alley, where the tree was blocking the alley. When they told me that, I said, exactly what place here does not have emergency access? All the houses on Niagara have emergency access. All the houses on Maine have emergency access from that way. There are two houses at the end of the alley that have to access their house from the alley, but they're up, up above me. The whole time we were working on that, which was a day and a half, the people that needed to access their homes easily were able to come in and out of the alley with no problem. As you can see, there's access from 3rd Street. There's also access from the uh, town parking lot. In this open field area, all the big trucks use that area right there, and everybody uses that as a giant turnaround. <laughs> okay? So I could not see, in my mind, where it was such an emergency. Now, I also knew that the person who called it in is uh, the captain of the fire department, Blake Kinzer. Well, the house directly behind mine, where I've lived for 23 years, my neighbors have been Richard and Rhonda Kinzer. They knew, they came down and looked at everything that had happened on Saturday. They saw what we were dealing with. And yet, somehow, the call did not come in from Blake Kinzer until Sunday afternoon. And then I was told that I had to remove the branch immediately, that I had no choice that it had to be removed immediately. When I contended that it wasn't uh, an emergency access issue, that everybody had access, it was the next morning I was going to take care of this. Um, then they switched their reasoning to a public safety issue. And they told me, well, now this is a public safety issue. I said, what do you mean? They said, well, what if somebody walks underneath the tree. I said, that branch is not going anywhere. Okay, nobody's coming down. Why don't you put some tape around the area and warn people and then come back tomorrow and see how I'm doing, that I'm removing the branch. Well, that was, no, it was immediate. I had to take, I had to remove it immediately and I had to use this person that they brought that first told me it would cost me $2,500 to remove that branch. When I said that, when he told me that, I said, oh my God, no, that's, I can't afford that. I said, I have a guy, I have somebody coming in the next morning and he's only charging me $75 an hour. Then he walks away, the tree man does, and he comes back, Mason Babcock is his name. He comes back to me and he says, well, here, let me, I'll tell you what, I'll do it for $1,500. I'm like, what? No. I said, I have a person coming. He's been working with me the whole time. I've hired somebody. He's scheduled to come tomorrow morning. This is now around 5.30 on Sunday evening, okay? So they told me that I had to pay this man, I had to pay him $150 or, or $1,500.
and that I had no choice, absolutely no choice. I was so distraught, I still am. I am so upset because I could clearly see that they were making this a much bigger issue than it actually really was. Now to Corey's, uh, I will say that he's new on the job, I knew that. He was very kind and, and I could tell that he was clearly upset about the situation. I do feel that Mason Babcock uh, bullied not only me, but him. Once I said that this was not a access issue and they started in on the public safety thing, Mason was the one who said, this is a public safety issue. You have to remove this tree right now. It's a public safety issue. And they just kept saying, I had to do it right now, right now, right this minute. And this was the person that I had to pay to do it. It took him three hours to do it, okay? So that's $500 an hour. His first, what well, he first told me was 200, uh, 2,500, which adds up to about $830 an hour. This is outrageous that I am forced in this kind of situation. It was an emergency and I was doing the best I could do. I had everything lined up. We had done phenomenal work in getting everything cleared and ready so that we can either get my car towed out of there because none of that, that tree branch could not be dealt with until my car had gotten moved out of the way. Of course, it wasn't running. And so I, we had, and, and so this is, I can't believe that this, it happened. I was totally taken advantage of and told that I had absolutely no choice in the matter and forced to pay this very rude man $500 an hour to remove that branch. You saw that. You see that, okay? For $1,500, I could have gotten any tree guy on, in there. They would have done everything, including also my walnut tree got several branches broken off, including that for $1,500. And yet, I was forced to pay this man, okay? So he was real nice to me. He told me in the beginning, he said, oh, I'll take pictures and I'm gonna give you an itemized statement and I'm gonna give you all this stuff. And I'll give you a copy of the contract that they forced me to sign. And, and, and so in the end, this is what I got, okay? There's an, you also have a Xerox copy of this too, all right, in your path. Written on like it's tore off on a scrap of paper that he had in his car. And this is what he gives me for it. My receipt. When I walked out there toward the end, he, had, he was being verbally abusive to his wife. I noticed when they first showed up, that there was a lot of tension between them. When I walked out there, he was verbally abusing his wife. He was telling her, excuse me, to fuck off and other abusive things to her in front of us while we're being forced to do all of this. When he wanted payment, he demanded it. And he said, he came up to me and he said, I want my money and I want it right now. He wasn't kind, he wasn't nice, he was not friendly. I found out later, of course, that he's on the volunteer, pay on your volunteer fire department. And what I am asking for is, before I say that, one of the things I, I want here is if it were ever going to be a community, 
and we're ever, ever going to make this work, we have to start putting some compassion, some integrity, and some kindness, and some ethical and moral behavior into our decision making here. And I know that the town was run like that before I've been here long enough to remember that. What I'm asking for is I would like to be reimbursed, not the full $1,500, but the, the difference that Jack Farrell was going to charge me for three hours work, which would have been $75 an hour, which would have been $225. So that's what I would have had to pay Jack. Jack probably would have done it a lot faster. He was really fast. Okay? So what I'm asking for is that somehow you can find this somewhere in your town hearts here to find a way to reimburse me because I cannot afford this. And I have, I have looking at thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that has to come out of my own pocket. My whole fence was destroyed. Everything in my yard was destroyed. My furniture, everything. And none of it is going to be covered. I did have all my insurance. They won't cover an act of God. I'm screwed here, okay? And if it's not, if everything wasn't bad enough, then I had to face this and be just bullied and forced into doing something. This is awful. This is not the way we work with our people and our citizens in this community. This is not what we do. If they, all they needed to do, you saw that, all they needed to do was put some cones. That would have cleared this public safety issue right there. Oh, and by the way, while they're yelling, telling me public safety, public safety, public safety, not one town employee had a hard hat on or any safety vest or anything. And the tree guy didn't have a hard on, hat on. He didn't have any safety, nothing. He, all he had was a chainsaw or rope and a person to hold the rope, and that was it. He didn't have a truck, he had nothing. And this is what happened to me. I am so depressed. I am so exhausted. I am so stressed out. And I, I can't believe this happened. I just can't. And I was, we, it was the most vulnerable time of all for them to come and do this. And I, they gave me no choice, absolutely no choice. It was immediate. I had to remove it, and I had to remove it immediately. Thank you very much for having the courage to come in and share all of this with us. I, mm -hmm. No, it's not easy. It's not easy at all. I don't know that we can actually deal with this tonight, but what I would like to do is to uh, put this on the next agenda, and then we can make a decision on reimbursing you the money at that point in time. Could we assign staff some oh, wait, we, Yeah, we could actually assign staff to look at this, and um, I don't know if this needs to be a board decision. This could probably be a staff decision. Would you agree with that, Mr. Conklin? I think on something like this, it might require some board direction okay. to staff to make a determination on that kind of expenditure. Okay. Um, town staff could potentially make that, but kind of given where this issue lies, it might be better directed by, by the board. Okay, then I would suggest that we put this on the next agenda. We will do some investigation and then we will get back with you in two weeks and let you know what the decision is. Yes, Mr. Well, Madam Mayor, I'm wondering, um, it seems like some things would be interesting to know, like what is a typical charge 
by a tree service. Five hundred dollars an hour does seem. And I have friends that do this kind of work, and that's not what they charge. And so it seems it would be it would be important that staff looks at um, what are the charges. Find three or four tree services around that are insured, and what do they charge per hour, and bring that information. And if they could interview. Mason Babcock and find out what his side of the story was. Madam Mayor, I'm here. Excuse oh, you're here. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Um, um, I'd like to. Right, yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. But anyway, just more investigation, more information, so we know what a fair charge is. Those types of things. Okay. And I think the idea of putting um, the possibility of a reimbursement on next agenda is correct. Yeah. Yeah. So that it would be in discussions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mr. Babcock, okay, we'll start with Ms. Ferguson. I just wanted to uh, let the board make the board aware that I have already begun that. I met with um, Ms. Riley O'Reilly uh, this afternoon for about an hour and had a conversation with her, and I've already reached out and started to receive information from other tree services, and I'm looking into it. Okay, thank you. Yes, Mr. Jobs. Um, I think as we move into the discussion at the next meeting, um, it, it would be valuable to have information on how we as a town interact with these kinds of services. Yes. Um, and especially what the impetus for the town and its connection with this particular service was um, and why maybe there was an opportunity to get bids or, you know, some information on funding before the work was done. I already had somebody. <laughs> yeah. And I also think uh, looking at our own policies when it comes to this kind of a situation and reassessing what our response would be to all of this as well. So, yeah, I mean, those are all good things for the board to discuss and take a look at the next time. Okay. 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 Mr. Babcock had his hand up. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to speak. You're welcome, Mr. Babcock. Do you want to be requesting equal yeah. time? Okay. I'm sorry. As Ms. Riley. I will be requesting equal time, is Ms. Riley? Or am I to understand that the town is holding trials without oh, the jury of my Oh, this is not a trial, okay, sir. Okay, so can I have equal time? We'll start out with three minutes and then we'll go from there. So I'm not getting time. equal time as I my accuser. I didn't say that. I said we would start with three minutes. I want then equal it, time. It will be a Am I not getting decision. equal time as my accuser? This, this is, is not a trial. This is out right, of order. Right. Okay, Mr. But am Babcock, I not getting the same time as my? No, accuser? you are not. Okay, at this I'll point. take my three minutes. Thank you. That's better. <laughs> better. My name is Mason Babcock. I'm one of the arborists here in Paonia, and I own Alexa Gray Tree Solutions, for which I am the lead climber and sawyer. I'm also the lieutenant of the Paonia Fire Department, where I serve my town admirably. I don't think this had to be explained to anyone, but my private business has nothing to do with my public service. Alexa Gray Tree Solutions has nothing to do with Payonia Fire Department and vice versa. On Sunday, April 24th, 2022 at 446 PM, I received an emergency tree call from Mr. Corey Heinegger. I had recently given him an estimate for tree work in the town of Payonia. Mr. Heinegger made it clear to me that they had a tree down that was a major risk to human property, health, and safety. I scrambled, loaded about $10,000 worth of climbing gear and felling gear into my truck, and I arrived on scene in less than 20 minutes. That type of response for an emergency does not exist in this town. Upon arriving on scene, we confirmed that the tree was in fact a major risk to human property, health, and safety. The top of the tree had half fallen and in between a crotch, you have the pictures, and a piece that easily weighed thousands of pounds was hanging approximately 30 feet in the air. This is an area where children are playing. This is an area where people will be walking home from the bars. This is an area where there is heavy civilian traffic. It's dangerous, it could kill somebody. I've seen it kill people and it's almost killed me. I personally climbed the tree, pieced it out, applied rigging where necessary or possible, and got the job done without a single hitch. No damaged property, no injuries, no falls. Perfection. We piled wood out of the way so that people could safely across the access the alley. We collected payment and returned our son to our Sunday dinner, which had gone cold. The next day, we dropped off an invoice per the request of Mr. Caulfield. That invoice was left in the mailbox at the home, and I have a copy of that invoice coming across your desk now. 
It was not written on a piece of paper. That was what I provided temporarily until I could get home and print out a professional invoice. Two days later, I received a voicemail from Ms. Karen Fogg saying that she was an advocate for Miss Mary Riley and she was going to make sure the town never calls me again to do the work and then she was quote going to make sure that my name was spread around for charging her. Uh, Miss Karen Fogg is popular on Facebook and she likes to drag people through the mud. I believe that's what she was speaking of. It was a blatant direct threat towards my source of income from someone I had never met in my life. I explained to Ms. Fogg that she was out of line and that she should not be making such threats. It was also made clear that Mr. Gregory Caulfield signed a contract with us agreeing to protect, defend, and hold us harmless, and her behavior as their advocate was a direct violation of that agreement. The three minutes is up. Would the board like to grant Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, Babcock, um, more time? Yeah, I move that we give Mr. Babcock more time to finish his statement. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Go ahead, Mr. Babcock. It was also made clear that Mr. Gregory Caulfield signed a contract with us agreeing to protect, defend, and hold us harmless, and her behavior as their advocate was a direct violation of that agreement. Fast forward to today, where I get a call from my fire chief, Blake Kinzer, explaining to me that Ms. Fogg has continued her harassment with him and is accusing a volunteer fire department of extortion. Here's what I have to say about this whole situation. Mr. Caulfield and Mrs. Riley are grown adults that signed a service agreement to hire a company to do work. That company was not Paonia Fire Department. That company was Alexa Gray Tree Solutions. As mentioned before, the two organizations do not work together in any capacity. Ms. Fogg has been antagonistic of me long before this incident with her Facebook presence and her willingness to judge and label people without any regard for who they really are. Unlike today, until today, I didn't even know what she looked like, and yet she has the gall to accuse me and my brothers of extortion. I don't use my position as a first responder for extortion. It's never even crossed my mind. I will, however, tell you a few things that do cross my mind. Will I ever be able to wash this blood off my hands? Will I ever be able to close my eyes without seeing every fatality run through my head? Will I always be able to hear screaming and crying in my subconscious? Will I be able to save the next house like we did the last house? Was that person really ripped in half or did I just imagine it? For the price of $10 a call, those are my thoughts about being a firefighter for this town. Not extortion and not price gouging. Ms. Fogg's accusations are a joke. I left my home on a Sunday evening to risk my life and make sure that other people got a shot at safety. For that, there is a price to pay. I think Mrs. Fogg's true issue here is that I didn't volunteer. Thank you, sir. All right, any other? Uh, we're only going to speak once. We're not going to do this as a trial. Yes, Mr. Martin. Thomas Markle, 302 Second Street. Um, I'm not a trustee yet, so I uh, understand that I'm still allowed to speak freely. Um, so uh, I went down to, to Miss Riley's um, as soon as I heard about this incident, incident and um, I think that it represents uh, excessive liability for the town. Um, I'm not sure about your timing for uh, meeting next, uh, I, I may be making a motion to deal with this sooner than two weeks from now. Um, basically, there are a couple laws that may have been broken um, on the heart of town, or at least uh, nearly by town. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to play out. It's going to be up to Mr. Compton to. to inform us as to what we might do. Um, but I want to make you aware that there is a uh, state requirement uh, for public integrity in municipalities, uh, which we may uh, have run afoul of. Um, and you can jot this down, CRS 2431-113. Um, 
you may want to get more information about that statute. Um, aside from that, uh, I absolutely appreciate Mr. Babcock standing up and being allowed to uh, speak his piece. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Watson. Suzanne Watson. Um, I question where were the police if this was an emergency? How many days was this going on for and where were the police? Why didn't they come right away? Why didn't someone who was a police person driving by say, wow, there's something down there that's happening. We better, you know, rope it off, put traffic cones there, whatever. But more than that, where was the authority? You know, when you get pulled over and the police hands you a citation, it tells you what statute you're breaking, it tells you what law you're breaking. What, where was the authority to compel Mary Riley to, act, to assign a, sign a contract and sign a check to a, a private individual? Um, I think in our, I've looked through our code and there's, under this tree section, there, it talks about dangerous um, trees on um, private property. There's nothing that addresses an act of God like this. But there's always due process that's given. There's always um, a notification that happens, an opportunity for the homeowner in a period of time to attend to it. And then if they don't, the town comes in, does the work, and tries to get the money from the homeowner. They don't compel the homeowner to work directly with a contractor they drag down there. So there's something that's incredibly, um, uh, it just seems like it was not the right way to have proceeded in this. So I'd like to know what statute um, um, authorized this type of action? Um, what were the town ordinances that might have authorized this? And um, where were the police? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Watson. Okay, yes. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Michelle Patterson, 302 2nd Street. Uh, you mentioned that you don't want this to be a trial tonight. I agree with that. But I think before directing staff to do anything, before the board deciding what your next steps are going to be, you need to have an executive session with your attorney to talk about what liability you might face and what your attorney thinks the next step should be. So I would strongly urge the board to consider that as a next step and hopefully sooner rather than later. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Mary DeFranco, six. 24 7th Street. Um, I'm getting up here to say Mary Riley does not know Karen Fogg at all. There was no interaction from Mary Riley to Karen Fogg just for your information. Thank, Thank you. you. I saw another hand. Yes. <laughs> Rick Stelter, 312 3rd Street. Um, if there was an emergency declared by an agency or agencies, um, I think that the agencies or agency or agency are responsible for the excess charges for this. We had, she had a, a person already working on this and it became an emergency by declaration. And that means that the person declaring the emergency or persons make it their responsibility to pay the excess charges. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Madam Mayor, just a clarification. Sir, you've had your chance to speak. But All right, no, sir. About Karen Fox. Sir. I have a voicemail, ma'am, with all of the information where she is threatening me and claiming to be Mary Riley's advocate. I have that voicemail and I'll send it to you. All right. Thanks. Okay, we're going to, anyone else want to address the board on this item that is not on the agenda? I'm there. I'm yeah. kind of gathering the informational pieces as we go along yeah. here, so I just kind of want to wanted to revise what I advised previously about whether this could be a staff or a board decision. Yes. I think that if it's appropriate for the staff to review and it's it's clear that there's authority for the town to cover this <laughs> uh, without issue, 
then that would be appropriate. That may have happened short of this in any case, short of our board meeting tonight in the comment in any case. If there's some question as to that, we could come back to the board at its next meeting for review and decision making. That would be my recommendation. Okay. Does the board agree with that recommendation? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Pumpkin. Yep. So, Ms. Ferguson, it's kind of in your hands. All right. Let's move on to the consent agenda. Can I get a motion to accept the consent agenda? Do I have a second? Second. Discussion by the board? I just have one question. Yeah. We finished with um, our public, yes, public recognition as the only one. Okay. I just wanted to make sure no one else came to yeah, the statements. I, yep, I asked. Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Thanks. Mr. Johnson. On page 16. That would be regular town board meeting, March 24th. Yes. On which I was absent from. It does say that I seconded the oh, motion. Oh, not good. <laughs> you were here in spirit. <laughs> so anyway, that needs to be corrected. All right. That's all. All right, anyone else? Okay. So we have there will be a correction made on the agenda. All in favor of approving the consent agenda? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Cat motion passes. All right. Next up is disbursements. Mr. Tracy, I believe this is in your hands for Unfortunately. It. Yeah. All along. Um, Madam Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve accounts payable in the amount of fifty thousand six hundred forty-two dollars and eighty-three cents. We previously approved the loan payment and the Norris retirement payment. I'd like to recommend or add to my motion that we transfer to, I mean, that we uh, transfer to payroll um, and also transfer from ops and do the payroll deposit of two different payrolls on 4 8 of 19,686.72 and on April 22nd of $23,744.30. In addition, for taxes of $6,841.32 for April 8th and $7,907.21 for April 22nd. Okay, do I have a second on disbursements? A second. Discussion from the board? Yeah, um, I have a question on page 25. And uh, I was curious, it, there are four entries for payroll and then payroll taxes, but I, I'm not quite sure why the 6841 in parentheses and the 7907 in parentheses, I, it doesn't seem like they are um, have been integrated into here in terms of coming out of a fund and going into another fund. And I'm just wondering what I'm missing. That's paying payroll taxes. No, no. The 19,000, the 23,000 show up everywhere which makes sense but those two don't do not show up it comes directly out of the operating account the payroll comes out of the payroll account we transfer the funds into the payroll account the payroll direct deposit comes out of the payroll account the payroll taxes come directly out of the operating account so um yeah. Madam Mayor, if I yes. can explain. Mm -hmm. um, when we sign checks on Friday morning the checks for the um, Unemployment insurance, FICA, insurances, those types of things, those are direct checks that we pay, that we approve. So that's why you don't see them in that thing, because it's, it's part of disbursements. Does that help? It's part of disbursements as right. opposed to going in and out of accounts. It's right. in and out of accounts here. Right. Yeah, yeah. Payroll okay. Accounts. It doesn't, I, it doesn't account. really make sense, but I'll look at it. <laughs> okay. And then I just was curious which loan was being paid for the 11671 that was from the last time, and it is what the um, smaller Water Power Authority loan. That's what that, okay, Water Power Authority. Thank you. I have another question sure. on page 26. Let me just get to it. Um, I was curious, the summit balance, um, there was $100,000 that was added in to that summit balance from the previous meeting, if I remember. And I was just curious where the 100000 comes from. Operating account? And out of the operating account into the summit account. 
So when you say the operating accounts, so there was $100,000 that, that did not need to be encumbered for payment for anything, so then it goes into a, some it is a checking account? It's an investment savings. account, okay. savings account that okay. earns interest. It's a savings, thank you. I've always wondered what that what summit meant. And uh, page 27, I have a comment or a question. And this is on the disbursements. Um, I was curious about the training at the very top, CGFOA, audit and budget. I was just curious what that training was. That is, um, they have, they're offering um, training. Uh, the first one is titled Audit 101. The second one is titled Budget 101. And I'm um, hopeful that it will be um, able to be used um, for you all to review to have better knowledge of audit and budget. So it, it should be prescriptive things that you can use to explain to us what's going on under, underlying the budget? Is yes. that cool? Good. So you're being trained to train us, essentially. No, I'm going to watch it to make sure that it's going to provide, that it's going to be okay. information that you'll understand to provide the training for the board to have so that you yeah. have more information. No, I appreciate that because you can tell I don't quite get it from the previous questions I've just asked about the 100,000. Um, and my other, my last question is uh, we're buying quite a bit of equipment from phones and um, we have been buying quite a bit of equipment from phones and the purchasing policy asks for three bids when you get into those levels of spending. And I just wondered, are we sole sourcing everything with phones or are we getting any bids according to the purchasing policy? We are sole sourcing all things with phones. They are our IT um, operator. So all services and all equipment comes through phones so that it's covered by our uh, IT agreement. Hmm. I I would like to see us maybe consider doing more uh, bidding according to the purchasing policy for future things. Okay. And well, let me ask this: Could we have the contract with phones uploaded to um, Unicode? But is is not there? Yes, and you did ask for that. I scanned it, and I just haven't had okay. the opportunity to go and attach it. Thank you. And then my one last question is: What are the blades for? Um, Saw blades for the streets that saws okay. the concrete and mm -hmm. the asphalt when they have to cut the road to Thank access. You. And to, one last thing, um, I'm noticing, and first of all, thank you for the payroll summary tables that are have been included in this in the four, previous packet. That's really helpful. Thank you. And I just want to uh, ex express concern about the amount of overtime with uh, Jeremiah and uh, Jordan and hope that that is a cause of because they're new. And trying to get their feet under them, but it's, it's that, concern. and they are um, splitting between um, and working on some of the monitoring and things that are happening over the weekends, and, and really doing an incredible amount of um, really good work at the plants. But we don't anticipate that that will keep at that pace. And while we're speaking of the payroll as well, uh, apologies, I wasn't in here when we first started disbursements. I did want the board to be aware when you're looking at the payroll summary that you will notice that um, Public Works Director Heinegger has um, a higher pay uh, because of overtime. And I want to make the board aware that he is a salaried position, but during the time when you're first hired and doing your training and onboarding, you are paid for your overtime, um, but that you won't see that moving forward after this pay cycle. Thank you, I hadn't noticed that. Thank you, that is the extent of my questions. Okay, anything else on the board? Can I just make a comment sure. on the payroll? And that is, if our employees continue to have to work overtime, it seems that we have a staffing issue that needs to be corrected and for that work-life balance to be achieved. So uh, I just would ask that you all keep an eye on this in the future. And if it does continue, we consider new positions on town staff. Thank you, sir. All right, anything else? Anything from the public? Yes, Mark. Um, I got a bunch of stuff because uh, I emailed my questions, but I didn't get any answers, so uh, I have to ask them here. I'm sorry. Um, first off, uh, the 
uh, there, I guess there's not line items, but there's a uh, one million gallon porta potty for eighty one dollars. Uh, that was also done last month um, for ninety. Let's see, how much was it? Uh, ninety six dollars. Um, I don't know uh, if you guys have ever worked on porta potties. They don't need that much service. Um, you need uh, one porta potty for about every 10 people if they're there full time. Um, so that's about, uh, and they get clean once a week at that rate. So it's 400 hours of use. Um, so if you have two people there spending two hours a day, which I think is generous for the 1 million gallon plant at this time, it should be about three months between services. Um, if you change your service to quarterly instead of monthly, it'll save you about $796 a year, um, which you pay for uh, picking up the park. Uh, there's recycle drop off. I, I don't know where that is or what it is. It's e it's the e cycle. It's us dropping off items to Double J that have been picked up. Someone used a town dumpster at the park to dump a large amount of electronics. Okay. Um, so it's like a. We take it to Double J. Okay. Um, I have a couple of those invoices that I'd like to review, um, specifically the Phones Plus and. Uh, our attorneys, um, I'd like to see how his time is being spent. Um, uh, electronic billing can save us, what, $400 right there? Um, I agree with Paige that uh, phones, it's Phones Plus, right? Yes. Okay. Phones Plus, um, being a sole source vendor, uh, has been really expensive. We bought like six workstations in the last two years. Um, I think it merits very close inspection uh, and actually if I was sitting there I might be making a motion to uh, create a committee to look specifically at that vendor and other sole source vendors. Um, there's a grant fund in there to Hotchkiss, I'd like to get details on that. Uh, where are we? Can I, can I answer them as? Uh, no, I, I don't think I'm going to run out of time here. Yeah. Um, so just jot these down and get back to me um, if, if you can after. Uh, there were, uh, not I have Corey, but it's not Corey, it's his son, uh, who was trained as a police officer. I'd like to know where his, um, uh, where we're at with his re, uh, repayment uh, for his post training. Um, I was wondering what uh, Amanda's FMLA absence finish date is going to be. Um, we have, yeah, that's the end for for budget. If I can get answers for that, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh. All right, we have a motion and a second. Yes, Mr. Thompson. Um, I just, I wanted to thank Mr. Markle for emailing his questions in ahead of time. And that's I'm trying to get to that. And I appreciate that. Um, and I would request that maybe if you could facilitate public comment between um, the commenters and, and the staff, sure. that, that might make the communication go more smoothly. Sure. Thank you. All right. We have a motion and a second to accept disbursements. Are we ready to vote? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. That motion passes. All right. Next item on the list is the board consideration of the draft agreement with Lone Cameron Turner Gibbs. Yes, gentlemen. My name is Paul Marvlin. I live at 14140 Dry Gulch Road. I'm going to be joined up here by Steve Kostler and Cassandra Schenk. And uh, we represent uh, collectively uh, Turner Ditch, Lone Cabin Ditch, and Pilot Rock Ditch. And uh, we're here to answer questions concerning the habitat replacement project that uh, hopefully you've all seen a document. Um, and um, so here we are. Uh, Corinne, did you want to add anything to that? No, I provided the, the documents. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're here. Okay. <laughs> so you just want to take questions from the board? Yes. All right. And for maybe to facilitate a little bit, there is a map over here. Uh, that's Very probably as big as you can get it. Yep. Uh, that basically shows the habitat replacement project centering centered around uh, the uh, 
the town of Paonia water treatment plant. Uh, Mr. Marker, we're not at public comment yet. This is on the agenda. Yes, it is on the agenda. It's number five on the agenda. Or, or it's, on the Sorry. it's not on the packet. Sorry. It's not on the packet. It, yeah, this was from a previous um, packet, I believe, right. but it's it not on the It's the last packet. Um, yeah, we presented to the board before. Correct. Uh, the yeah. details of this, and we had a tour out at the site. Right. And then there was, yeah, you know, we got the full agreement. Yes, Mr. Madam Mayor, I think for some of the people that are not familiar with this or weren't at the previous meeting, maybe a high level overview of what this involves and why it involves the town so that people have context. Well, all these ditch companies are basically, uh, they have a Bureau of Reclamation um, Irrigation Project grant. Piping. Pardon? Piping. That's correct. Um, and, um, there's a whole story behind that, but I'll just sort of keep it high level. And that as part of that grant, we're required to do some environmental things, one of which is a habitat replacement project, which is supposed to replace the habitat that's lost when we pipe irrigation water and dry some stuff up. Uh, that, that project is scored, and so we're supposed to come up with a habitat replacement project, positive credits, if you will, to uh, compensate for that habitat loss. And um, that's what the habitat project is out of the uh, treatment plant. You know, that's what that's all about. So it's probably, um, we plan on spending something like uh, 300K, uh, developing four to five water sources out in this area. And the whole idea is to come in there and um, in those various sections that are shown, we're going to be uh, removing invasive species, uh, mostly Russian olive and some tamaris, and um, building some natural dams and such to sort of remediate the area. And we'll be planting some uh, good species also. And all that stuff is kind of identified and probably more detailed than you want to look at in, the, uh, in that document. Sorry. Uh, the document is kind of determined by Bureau of Reclamation and, and uh, it was very detailed. Very, okay. very short. <laughs> no, <laughs> it was fascinating. I learned a lot. All right, questions from the board? Yes, Mr. Thompson. Um, so th this is remediation work for the buried ditch that's above town now, is that correct? Or well, these ditches haven't been. Uh, the actual irrigation project has not been initiated yet. You first have to get the environmental stuff out of the way, one component of which is the habitat replacement plan. And so the plan is to initiate the replacement plan and then um, enclose your ditches afterwards, is that correct? Once the plan is agreed upon, and uh, there's other environmental components to this that all come together in this environmental assessment report. Once that's all together, um, and uh, the Bureau gives its final okay, then we're allowed to proceed with the, the project from the point of view of piping the irrigation water. And I, I apologize because I'm, I, I think I came on when, before, after this like was really uh, explained in detail in the site visits. So um, I'll, I'll try to be brief and, and not reiterate, ask you to reiterate. Um, but just briefly, does the plan require water from current sources that like might go away later? Like how do you? Well, the sources, the five sources I mentioned, one is uh, the town of Paonia has two shares of farmer's ditch. And Steve is gonna correct me if I say anything wrong here. Um, we're also developing a spring that's on your property. Uh, there is a couple of uh, streams, effluent streams that basically go down to the North Fork River. One is directly from the ponds themselves, and the other is from a French drain that circles the entire uh, treatment plant, the ponds at least. And then we, we're also looking at getting some uh, tailwater from Delicious Orchards, which is just on the left side. You can see some of those orchards just on the left side of that, of that, uh, uh, of that map. And so there are, there's these water sources, and we're going to use those to basically irrigate the uh, good species that we put in, get them established. The whole project is enclosed in a, in a temporarily enclosed in a DOW fence to keep out the big critters from going after those uh, species until they're until they're developed. 
That's wise. Um, I, I, the only comment I would make is that it would be wise to not <clears throat> use water-dependent species like cottonwood and willow and have species that are more xeric should the French drain or the orchard water go away just for long-term viability. But thank yeah, you. We, we think in the long term, you know, the water table is quite high in this whole area. And, and the th most of the things we'll be putting in, once they sink roots down and get close to that water table, probably a lot of this irrigation uh, will be pulled out or terminated one way or the other. So the, the irrigation plan is, is there mostly just to uh, take care of the first four to five years for all these species to be established. Thank you. Um, and so are you looking at cottonwood and things like that? Trees like that are cottonwood trees. There's an area in section, well, it's directly south on that map of the ponds uh, where there's a lot of cottonwoods that have gotten dried up and have, you know, uh, died and fallen over. And that's one area that uh, we'll be going in, cleaning that up, and, and trying to establish some new cottonwood trees in there, along with some other species. Last comment. I nerd out on this stuff, so I apologize. Uh, <laughs> I would just recommend deep planting techniques um, to put the root balls in the water table um, so you're not certain about um, irrigation. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Anything else from the board? Yes. Not very oh, yeah. hard, but if no, I may. Uh, I understand that this presentation uh, materials and the agreement have been made available to the board or perhaps were in the last packet. The agreement wasn't in, in this packet. And it's, I, I think it was. It is. It's in the, the, the multi-page document that we got. There were two contracts in there, one for Delicious Orchards and one for, it's in the document that was given to the board. When? I didn't Where? see it. In the, in the packet that we said, downloaded. Uh, this from, packet is not in this Yeah, packet. and so, I mean, it's on file, and I think it's you know, probably okay for the board to approve the agreement, given that it's on file, it's been in the packet. In the you know abundance of caution, it might be best now that we've had this discussion to bring the agreement back at the next meeting simply on the consent okay. agenda. It's not a public hearing; it doesn't require any additional discussion. But just to make sure that that's in the packet, so there's not any questions about it. Okay. Great. Okay. Anything else from the board? I, I would yeah. just like to say that I think I was in the audience when maybe this was brought up in the summer. But I, I've not read it. I, I oh, feel okay. completely unable to vote on anything because okay. I don't have any idea what I'm voting on. So, <laughs> okay. All right. Anything from the public? Yes, Miss Kendall. Have a question. Yes, come on up. Okay. Uh, Chris Kendall, Minnesota Creek Road. I have a question. This has been an ongoing project for what five years now. I think that's kind of what's getting these guys. Well, there hasn't been any project up to this point. No, but I mean, it's something you guys have been working on. Something that we've been working for towards the last for quite a while. Four or five years, and I think the documents were probably a few years ago. No. We got uh, it. Uh, no. Document oh. was. This course probably isn't appropriate right. for okay. the forum. But I mean, uh, I, my question is, is how long can this go on? Because I don't know if you guys have got all your funding and stuff in place. We have all our funding in place. Because I know last year you guys were still struggling with everything. And, and I there, the comments should probably go through you. Yes, and it should. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. It's kind of hard to, because they're the ones with the answers. Right. Um, what I was asking is, I know last year they were, because of pipe and things, that they didn't have enough money to do this project. And how long can this project keep going? until without the money and gets to get started oh, it sounds like they have the well it sounds like it yeah so um my next question is when are they planning on starting okay when do you, do you have it looks like you're starting when, when the board we haven't started anything yet when the board approves this habitat replacement project and when we have things done like the environmental assessment report um, and there's a couple of other aspects like um getting the uh, state Historical Preservation Society involved, or organization involved. So once the environmental stuff is all taken care of, that's when we launch into the real project. So there's okay. still a lot of steps to go yeah. through there before you guys get started. Thank you, Ms. Kendall. Okay, thank you. All right, anyone else? Yes, Ms. Pepps. Okay. 
I'd like to thank the presenters for being here tonight, for taking their time to be here. Um, as best as I can find, the last time this was in a public packet was in October 2021. Um, so you have three board members and your two incoming board members who have not seen any of the documents related to this. So I hope that you'll take the attorney's suggestion to hold off on a decision. I hope that that doesn't cause any difficulty for the people who took their time to be here tonight to speak to you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Ms. Watt. Suzanne Watson. I think the board needs to talk to the Colorado Rural Water Association about this, about our sewer treatment pond properties, about the future of sewer, what we might need in the future. I think before we commit any of town property, there has been so little discussion about this um, among qualified people, um, you know, staff-wise. Travis is not here anymore. We don't have an ORC. We, our public's work director is brand new. I really think you need to talk to the Colorado Water Association, the people who helped us with the sewer plant to begin with when it was um, put down there before any um, commitments and decisions are made. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, anything else from the public? Yes, Mr. Burke. Yeah, Bill Brunner from Tamina. I'm sure everybody's intentions are really good here, but the questions I have are really what is the town getting out of this uh, uh, besides feeling good? And are there any deed restrictions that go with the property? I would assume that for uh, the, someone to sign off on this, there has to be some commitment from the town that this is going to remain in place for some period of time. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Brunner, please. Oh, I'm sorry, the, the, there's going to remain in place for some period of time. He was right. asking me a question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or he wanted to. So what, what is that commitment from the town? Uh, yeah, thank, yeah. You. thank you. All right, anyone else? All right, so it looks like this will be continued until the next meeting. Pardon? The advice of our attorney. The advice of our attorney. All right. Thank you very much for coming. We much appreciate this, and it is a very wonderful, detailed report. And like I said, I learned a lot. Okay. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. All right. Next up is the discussion of JVS Hydro change order updates. And it was passed out. I don't know that any of us had a time to read this. So again, I think this should be. Yes, Ms. Yeah. I do want to let you know that James is available. I um, realize you didn't receive it until this evening, and uh, we have discussed the fact that it's still labeled as a draft attachment, um, although it is the final report, and that has been corrected this evening. Um, I realize the board hasn't had an opportunity to review it, and. So I'm not sure what Mr. Plumstarn's availability is at a future meeting if you're looking at the table, but he is here if you want to ask him. Um, Mr. Plumstein, what is your availability in two weeks to address this? Hi, Ol. Can you yeah. hear me? Get in. It's muted. Mm -hmm. Don't. Mm -hmm. There. All right. All right, Mr. Plumstein, can you uh, are you available in two weeks to talk to the board about this? Return to a board meeting, two meetings uh, in two weeks. Is that the question? I'm sorry. Uh, Can you I, hear me? Yes. Was, All right. One is the time. question, am I available to return in two weeks to the next Correct. board meeting? Correct. Let me confirm before I say yes. I believe that it is the 12th, and I can be available then. OK. Then I would say. Just we continue this until the next meeting, and then have a little feedback here. We continue this until yeah. the next meeting. 
What? Like if you mute him, we might not. Oh yeah, if you mute JDS. I got it. Okay, great. All right, then uh, I suggest we continue this until the next meeting, and we'll discuss it at that point in time, so that everyone has a chance to review it. Okay. Can I have a motion to do that? I think we move that we continue this item on the next uh, regular scheduled board. Do I have a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. We pass it. Move it on. Action item ordinance 04 2022 zoning modification to 1375 3rd Street. Madam uh, Mayor? Yes. Uh, items number 7 and 8 have the same. Uh, is it ordinance? Uh, my bad, I'm sorry. Yeah, no one's resolution, one's sorry. They just have the same number. Yeah, they do. Same number, different kind of thing. All right, so we, all right, so we made the zoning change approval at the last meeting, and this is the ordinance that then stands behind that zoning change approval. Is that correct? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, the ordinances, zoning changes are required to be done by ordinance, okay. so the board reviewed at a public hearing and took action. This is to effectuate that board decision. All right, discussion by the board. Okay, can I get a motion then? I'd like to move we approve ordinance number 04 2022 zoning modification of 1375 Third Street. Okay, is there a second? A second. Any, for, any other discussion from the board? No. Nope. All right, discussion from the public? Nope. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that motion passes. Sworn in. Sure. Well, I was going to say, do we want to take a five minute break before we do the swearing in? Well, th there was an item before this. Um, it was number five. So we have number, number four and seven are, have been moved. Okay, my bad. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Does the board want to take a five minute break? Yes. Um, I make a motion to take a five minute break. All right. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So I'm calling this meeting back to order. All right, next item on the agenda is recognition of the outgoing trustee. <laughs> He's packing up. He's out of here before we even say goodbye. Oh, my God. He's got a cocktail waiting for him when he gets home. Jeez. Jeff, don't forget Oh yeah, take your take your little board member thing. Yes, put it up and leave the leave the yeah. leave the stand. But seriously, yes, take it. leave the stand. But the thing on the inside yeah. is yours. Right. There you go. Can I have a minute? Ten minutes. Absolutely. I would like to first. I would like to say thank you to Mick Johnson for two years thank of you. dedicated service. It's been a pleasure. To want to say thank you to Paonia for uh, the opportunity and um, for a, a few moments to, to speak. Um, it's, uh, it's really an honor to be a part of this forum that we have and I think we're really privileged to live in a town that allows for us to, to interna interact in governance in the way that we do here. Um, uh, first, um, I'll try and keep my comments to three minutes. <laughs> Um, will you grant me an extension? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm sorry, I'll hurry up. Um, I, I wanted to um, give thanks to Dave um, for um, mentoring me and being a positive role model. I, I really appreciate that. And um, 
I think the, the town is a better place because you're on the board. Thank you. Um, I wanted to recognize Paige, my, um, my, kin, my kindred interim trustee. Um, one thing that I really learned from you is that you know, we don't always see eye to eye, but together we're able to make better decisions than any of us alone. And I, I just really appreciate your perspective and what we're able to accomplish because of all of the expertise that everyone has to offer. Um, uh, Mary and, and all the trustees, it's just, it, it's obvious that there's a, such a strong desire to do good. And, and that's really what I took away from my experience here is that um, if we all have the best interests of the town at heart and that that's our goal when we walk into this room, that Pan is going to be a better place. Uh, I'm here because I love the town and uh, I just want to say thanks for the opportunity and good luck to the new trustees. Um, and I'll see you around town and maybe I'll see you in this room a little bit too. <laughs> The next step is to fill these empty seats. So, would uh, Mr. Markle, Mr. Stetler, Mr. Valentine, and Ms. Smith stand up and we're going to get you your oath of office. Can we, can we stay here? You can stay here, okay. I don't think we need to do it out here. That's okay. Green's the woman, so we just need to kind of. Yeah, we'll get out of the way and let you guys Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so we'll do them all at once. If that, that, that's great. Works? Okay. So uh, we'll raise your hand. I state your name. I, I am Affirm that I will faithfully support the Constitution of the United States. Affirm that, that I will faithfully cover the Constitution of the United States. States. The Constitution and laws of the state of Colorado. The Constitution and laws of the state of Colorado. And the laws of the town of Paonia. And the laws of the town of Paonia. And I will faithfully perform the duties. And I will faithfully perform the duties of the office of a member of the Board of Trustees. Of the office of a member of the Board of Trustees. Of the town of Paonia, of the town of Paonia, to which I have been elected. To which I have been elected. Thank you. Guys, if you could wait one second, I'm going to take a picture. So, kind of <laughs> cluster. <laughs> Thank you. Wish we had a professional photographer here, so we'll just get what I got, which may not be the best. But we'll do that. Smile. Good to try it. <laughs> this is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome everyone. Thank you. Okay. Welcome to our new trustees. Uh, I, I don't know if Corinne has gotten you your lovely little binders with all the stuff in it yet. We have them, they're just not handed out yet. Okay, so I guess you can pick them as, as you leave this evening. Mm -hmm. Little light reading. Sure. Maybe put you to sleep tonight. <laughs> so, uh, um, I would also like to definitely welcome you and thank you for stepping up to take part in all of this. I hope we can become a good functioning team together and to work in the best interest of Pam. All right, so there are a couple things I do need to make you aware of. We do have a SIRSA training for incoming board members on May 4th here in Town Hall at 5 p.m. So make sure that that is on your calendar. And um, Sam Little from SIRSA, or Sam Light. Sam Light will be here in person. Um, I'll be here on Zoom. But okay, that's great. All right, and then on May 17th at 6 p.m., there will be a board training from DOLA. And Dana Levesque, our DOLA representative, 
will be providing that. 6 p.m.? 6 p.m. on May 17th. Okay, thank you. And he'll be here. He will be here, yes. Again, the strategic planning will be on June 25th. We are going to have a board retreat in Grand Junction. And that is going to be the, sixth, or the 17th and 18th of June. It'll be a half day on the 17th and a full day on the 18th. Oh. <laughs> Me neither. Okay, so can you make it the following day? Uh, the 24, 25? Yeah. I could? Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right, then here's what I'll do. I will get in touch with our facilitator and see if he can change that to the 24th and the 25th. But that's the so, so this is strategic planning day. Oh, good grief. <laughs> And then we've got, yeah, so the next thing is the 4th of July weekend, and that's not going to work. Let me pull up my calendar here. Sorry. And I won't be out of town the 4th of July weekend. Well, we're not going to do it the 4th of July weekend. Yeah, that's true. Days. So let's see what we got going here. I want you to know I rarely have anything going on. Right. <laughs> so we do. We could possibly do it the 10th and the 11th I can't do of it. June. Oh, I can't do it either of those two. We can't do it. I'm so sorry. Okay. So the 10th and 24th, 25th, no. So July 8th, the next opportunity, 8th and 9th. Good, that. That works. That, that works? Yeah. OK, July 8th and 9th. <laughs> Eight, nine. Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. And then the last thing is Dola will be here to do a budget training on July 26th at 5 o'clock. And that will again be here. 5 o'clock? 5 o'clock, yeah. Can you repeat that date on July 26th? Twenty-six. Twenty-six. Yeah. All right. Yes, Ms. Brown. Thank you. Um, I wanted to check with the board. I told the Turner um, Ditch Habitat individuals that I would check. They offered a 9 a.m. tour again um, Monday morning. If the new incoming trustees or anyone that wasn't able to attend um, the tour that they had previously, they would be willing to do that again. They are available again. It's very short notice, Monday, May 2nd at 9 a.m. Uh, I told them I would let them know uh, tomorrow if that would work for the majority of the board. I would like to say that I can, but more, no more than two of us can go, unless you're going to make it a public meeting. I'm, going to, I'm going to post it. that okay. you'll be doing a tour at Very the, good. At the plant. So at what time? 9 a.m. Monday morning. A.m. is 9.30. 9 a.m.? 9 a.m. Okay. Monday morning. Um, meet, well, do you all know where the sewer plant is? Mm -hmm. Yes. No? No. Yes and no. Um, meet here. I'll let them know we're going to meet here, and then you can convoy over. Okay. Okay. Would it be a good time then to have uh, Corey or someone take us through the sewer plant at that point, as long as we're down there? Or point of order. Yes, Mr. Marco. What is your point of order? Orders of the day. Um, Pardon? Or orders of the day. We're off topic. Um, I don't know where this discussion falls. This is still, general. it's the, um, it's the mayor's welcome. It's part of the mayor's welcome. Okay. Thank you. Would this? I can that, make that happen if that, if the board would like to do that. At would the, the board time. like to do that? Just take a tour of the sewer plant as long as we're down there? Okay. Sure. So it's 9 a.m. Monday. 9 a.m. Monday. Seems like. Okay, great. All right. Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Did I understand that's good? Oh, please come up. Thank you. Diane Chabonet, 211 4th Street. Um, did I understand in that interchange that that's going to become a public yeah. tour? Yes. Oh, the public. Okay. Yeah, the public can attend that. Yeah. Thank you. Christina Patterson, Price Road. So, did you determine when the board retreat is? Uh, we're 
kind of attempting to set it up for July 8th and 9th, by 8th and 9th. And uh, it, who determines that, that you need a board retreat? And is that open to the public? Yes, of course, it's a public meeting. Okay. And then you guys pay for hotels for the next night in Grand Junction for yes. a hotel? Yes. And why and can't you just have it here in this room? Because sometimes it is good to get away. And you can get a lot more done when you get out of the environment that you're in and go to a different environment. And this was at um, the request of a consultant. A consultant. Okay. But the board doesn't get to decide that? The board doesn't get to decide that? I'm arranging this and I'm paying for it, so no. You're personally paying I'm for it? I'm personally paying for this out of my savings. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay. Seems very, is that right? Okay, no, that's, not right. that's weird. It's crazy, it's a meeting, and the public is not gonna follow the grand junction. Okay, excuse me, but Ms. Watson. Suzanne Watson. Um, can you tell us who the facilitator is? And Chris what Lowe from uh, the GPS. Pardon? Chris Lowe from GPS. I'm the facilitator for the yes. retreat. Okay, yes. and what's the nature of the retreat? It's team building and it's goal setting and it's coming to work together as a team. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mr. Knudsen? Um, I'd like to make an announcement to my new fellow board members that um, I now have another partner in crime with me, and his name is John Valentine. So just as previously I had a partner in crime, and that was uh, Trustee Thompson, we agreed that we would leave the meeting at 930. So I wanted to alert the new board members that we still intend to do that, leave at 930, which would mean we're not going to conduct business after that time because you won't have a quorum. So um, I wanted to give you that heads up because you may want to change the agenda order and there may be items that you want to make sure we address before we leave tonight. So I wanted to at least let you know that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So next item up on the agenda is Resolution 06-2022, Trustee Vacancy. This is just to open to say we do have a vacancy. We have 60 days to fill it. It is board decision as to how long we will accept letters and when we will fill this vacancy. So can I get a motion to approve resolution 06-2022? Yes, Mr. Merkel. I move that we approve resolution 06-2022 with the modification. Uh, appointment no later than 60 days, strike 60 and replace it with seven. Uh, we need a meeting in order to appoint the person. Uh, this would require a special meeting. Yes, it would require a special meeting. Yeah. So you are asking, all right, let's deal with the ordinance first. All right, so we have a motion to uh, accept resolution with the change of 60 to 7. Got a second. I'll second for discussion okay. purposes. Discussion by the board. What about the trustee vacancy? Excuse me, Suzanne, we're not there. Oh, okay. This is. Oh, I see what you're saying. I was, I was <coughs> I, I'm not sure I understand where exactly in the uh, ordinance you're referring to. Thank you. So if you uh, can clarify. Page 54, section 2. Board of Trustees vacancy. Such vacancy shall be filled by appointment not later than 60 days from the approval of this resolution. For to have a shorter time frame for that. Okay. And you're suggesting seven days. I suggest seven. And have a special meeting. I feel that we have a lot of work to do and we're going to have a lot of special meetings. We should go ahead and do that. Okay. Yes, Mr. Peterson. Um, one thing I'm really concerned about, um, Trustee Marco is that um, I want to make sure that anyone in the public has a chance to be able to get on this. And merely giving seven days notice may not be enough. Our local papers only come out once a week, and you know it takes time. So I would, I would think that seven days is a little short for people. I understand the urgency of getting someone else and be operating with a full board, so I'm totally in alignment with that. I just want to make sure that we can allow enough time for staff to accept those, for them to get those in our packets, and for us to be able to make a decision. But having a special meeting for that, I think 
with our regular meeting schedule, we could fit this in. So that's the only thing we have. If I may, the 60 days is the statutory maximum that we need to take action within that period of time. The board could set some type of timelines as to nominee, nominations must be submitted within X number of days of today, and then after that point in time, it can be brought back at a regularly scheduled board, board meeting. Yes. I'm going to amend the main motion to uh, rather than seven to say fourteen to put us at our next regular meeting to twelve. Okay. Do I have a second on that amendment? I'll second, second that. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's good. Oh, that's okay. That's fine. <laughs> All right, discussion from the board? No? Okay. Um, I, I just want to say is, so um, the step would be tomorrow you put on a uh, letter of interest? Is that, um, mostly I'm looking at administratively, the, we need to put a letter of interest out, the asking no, we, for a letter of interest. Yeah, we just need to put announcements out in the newspapers, on KBNF, wherever else we can distribute it so that people know that right. there is an open seat. So I'm just, I'm asking logistically, so you want to choose the person on the 12th. Logistically, the uh, DCI will be out. I don't know if you, I don't think you do it in the DCI, do you? You no. just usually do it on the web page? Correct. For the trust letter and, of yeah, interest? Yeah, we can do it on KBNF. Wait. I put it in the shopper as well. And if it, um, is the intention that it be on the agenda for appointment on the 12th, that would give four business days for people to receive the information and respond. That is not enough time. That is really not enough time. Well, that's that's why I wanted to ask is logistically, um, you know, is that? Yes, we still have one. Uh, I feel like there we have one application already. Um, it's no secret that uh, we just got seated. I think it's well understood by the community um, interested folks already uh, have talked about it. Um, I don't think that uh, waiting for, I suppose, the next proposal would be 30 days or uh, until our next two, two regular meetings from now um, is a month. And I don't think that uh, we will be able to deal with issues effectively without a full team. Mm -hmm. So I know it may be inconvenient for some, but it is eminently fair, in my opinion, to have two weeks to put together a letter that says your name, essentially. So if we, if it comes in by noon on Friday of the week before the meeting, would, is that sufficient to get it on the, in the packet? It can be in the packet, yes. I was just making it known that then it provides a, approximately four and a half days for someone to receive the information that it's an open seat and provide it to the board. Yeah. And, it's, it's, I, and again, I would let the board know as well that there are other individuals who have asked for information about the seat and were had not submitted anything because they didn't submit something for a vacancy that did not exist mm -hmm. until this evening. Okay, so if we make it for to be at the next meeting, then the deadline for the letter to be received by the clerk would be what would it be? May sixth. May sixth. Can we push it out any? It, it could be up until the 11th, conceivably. The packet could change up until the day before. The board does not usually tend to be very happy when I do that, but yes, it can. <laughs> for direction. Yeah. For the motion. Yeah. The amendment stands. Yeah, it does. Vote on that. Yes. If there's first, is there any comment from the public? Yes. Mr. Thompson. He stayed! Just a few comments as someone that came in under a similar situation. Um, uh, one is that the language is no later than 60 days, and so I do think that there is an opportunity to expedite the, the appointment, um, if possible. 
without changing the language in the uh, document. Um, I'm really interested in, after participating, to see as much public input in this process as possible, and I think in a shortened timeline could reduce the amount of public input, especially because the way I heard about this was word of mouth, and I think that's a big way that information gets around town. So I would encourage you to try to give as much opportunity as possible. Thank you, sir. Yes, Ms. Watson. Suzanne Watson. So what makes me a little sad is that you have a SIRSA training on May 4th, and you have a DOLA training on May 17th. And if you, I mean, if you conceivably did it before May 17th, you at least the new board member could start getting trained. But if you wait too long, they're going to miss all these training opportunities. And sadly, people just don't show up as public members. I mean, we can't even get the Planning Commission to show up to these trainings. So I, I don't know. At least I'll make the retreat for an injunction. I think they might be able to make 17th and 18th of June, or maybe July. Oh, yeah, 8th and 9th, that would work. But I mean, I really think getting the SIRS on the DOLA training um, is important. And if anybody's listening who wants to run for the board, um, note those times on May 4th and May 17th for the yeah. SIRSA and DOLA training. Thank yes, you. Thank you, Ms. Watson, for saying that, because I was going to invite anybody who put in a letter of interest to come to the trainings. All right. So anything else from the public? All right. Seeing none, we have an amendment to the main motion to uh, make the time limit 14 days. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. That motion passes. Then we have an amended motion to accept resolution 06-2022 trustee vacancy with the change to 14 days instead of 60. Any further comment? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, that motion carries. All right, let's move on to action item uh, resolution 06 2022, the appointment of officers. And this is. <clears throat> got the right one? Yes. This is the two-year appointment of officers that the board does every time the board is seated. At this point in time, we have no one to fulfill the treasurer's position. The staff has asked that the, um, Cindy Jones fill this position, as many small communities of our size tend to do that because we have advertised multiple times for a treasurer and have yet got even any interest in the position whatsoever. Mr. King, who served in that position, was an outgoing member of the board when he stepped up to do that, and he did it without compensation. No, no, he turned it down. No, he did. He did. He did. Yeah. Oh, okay, go ahead. Sign his check. <laughs> well, that would make sense. Yeah. All right, so um, we probably need to make a decision on the treasurer at this point in time as to what we're going to do with the treasurer, and I would ask Mr. Conklin. I mean, we are out of compliance with state law as it is without having a treasurer appointed. How long can we do this before we run into trouble? Mr. Conklin has the floor. Well, I, I think um, there is not a lot of risk in not having that filled, but it should, certainly should be filled. Um, also, in terms of this procedure, I don't know those state statute requires this, you know, after every election, this type of appointment, but it's been the town's practice, and I think it's been the town's motion and direction in the past to do so. Part of the reason it may not be is because the appointment of these positions, there's also some cases employment contracts that are running concurrent but for those roles that are filled. So it's, I think it's okay if you'd like to do, uh, to do this, but yes, um, you know, continue to make efforts to appoint uh, find someone for a finance director, but it is very, very common for that role to be filled by, I'm sorry, for the treasurer, for that to be filled by your finance director. So. Thank you, sir. Yes, Mr. Mark. Um, I move that we go into executive session for Colorado Revised Statutes 24-6402-4B. 
confer with our attorney for the purpose of receiving legal advice on specific legal questions pertaining to CRS, Title 31, Article 4, Part 3, Organizational Structure and Officers of Statutory Towns. Is this permissible without being agendized, Mr. Conklin? I, I always take the position that the board gets to talk to its attorney whenever, whenever it wants. It doesn't have to be on an agenda for, for that. So I, 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 think, I think that a, a board can move to go into executive session to get legal advice without it being appearing on the agenda. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second. Discussion from the board? Yes. Um, I'd rather see discussions like this about what the legal advice is um, in full view of the public so the public can hear uh, any questions we as board members might have about these appointments. I think it'd be important for the public to know what we're trying to do. Okay. I don't see the rationale, I guess, for why we'd want to have an executive session. So I will be voting for this day. Mr. Markle? Um, it's my understanding that we, uh, that legal advice is privileged and to be given an executive session. Uh, if there's a mechanism for that to be done in public, uh, perhaps it's a misunderstanding on my part. So, my, sure, my, you know, if, when you're operating in my role, kind of in a public meeting, there's you're kind of always there's always legal issues that I'm commenting on. Um, when I'm uh, providing uh, communication to the board, it's privileged. That privilege gets to be waived by the board, so it's up to the board on, on that one. Another just procedural note: executive sessions require approval of two thirds of the trustees to move into executive session. What does that number out? What does that two thirds of five? Five. So three would have to vote in favor, if I'm understanding. Five. Um, out of the five, four would need to vote in favor. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Um, any further discussion from the board? Um, I'm not sure about, you know, I'm not against doing an executive session, but I think there is quite a bit to be talked about here in this situation. And I frankly would like us to continue this to the next meeting. Yeah, this is, to my understanding, this is not a pressing issue. It right. does not need to be done at this meeting. Am I correct, Ms. Ferguson? It's in 30 days. Okay. okay. Was being seated. Uh, and the reason I say that, and there's a lot to be uh, discussed here, if I might. Um, the finance officer and the treasurer's duties are, are quite similar. And um, I appreciated Michelle Pattison's point that one responds to the trustees and the other to the administrator. I am not comfortable with combining these positions. I think it's important to have a second set of eyes. But that requires much more discussion because in order to get a treasurer, I think we need to make it a much more appealing position and put more money towards it. And I honestly have to say, I really did Ross King really do all the things in this town treasurer because he he had nothing to say at meetings. I mean, it was so perfunctory. I was shocked to see how many things the treasurer does. So again, I'm just, I, I don't know. He just never provided any of this sort of level. So I have no idea how much time he took him or anything because of that, um, you know, following in his footsteps. So I, I can't do this in a perfunctory way okay. tonight. Step. Just one quick comment while we're on the treasurer appointment is that it's, it's not uncommon in small statutory towns that that treasurer role is a bit ceremonial, you know, and um, anyway, if that, just a point while I'm thinking of it, but we can, can have further discussion if the board chooses to move that to a future meeting. Yes, Mr. Step. Um What I see here is traditionally you put out a uh, call for a treasurer. And in my thought, for due diligence, we just go ahead and do it. I know what, what's happened in the past, but we can't say that that's going to happen this time. And I think we ought to put out a, a, a proposal or a request for letters of interest and that we work our way from there. And I know we've got a time limit, and that means that we have letters of interest in by the end of two weeks, and then we can make a decision either at the next meeting or the meeting afterwards. And we can make this happen and fairly quickly. Okay, so 
I want to confirm, do we have a second on Mr. Merkel's motion? Yes. We do All right. Second. So we need to deal with that motion first yes. at this point versus talking treasurer. <clears throat> so is there, yes, Mr. Mark. Um, so I have questions pertaining to this law that's cited on 3143, um, some of which pertains to the treasurer and some of which does not. So I can't obviously in open meeting begin to speak about the things that may be discussed in closed session. I think what I've described is appropriate for um, my questions I would like to have answered by our attorney. Um, if I'm not given the opportunity at this moment to have my questions answered, I would like to know what mechanism I have for receiving that in the very near future. Okay, so let's deal with the motion on the table. Thank you. So uh, there is a motion and a second to go into executive session. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Opposed? Amen. All right, that motion does not pass. All right, so then we have a second suggestion that we continue this item to the next meeting. Can we make that a motion? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to continue the resolution appointing statutorily required positions of the municipal. Oh, actually, can I back up one second? Um, can this be done in pieces? Since our attorney is here, can he be appointed tonight and we continue for the other two positions? Well, it looks like the judge, too. Yeah, we could do both. We could do the, the attorney and the judge. So let me back up because okay. I, um, I. It may be simpler since we have. Um, 30 days to do this. Mm -hmm. We could do it all the next session. We could. I was just thinking because Jeff was here. Well, and he also, he's under contract, so we're not going to kick him out the door. Right. So. I mean, you guys. <laughs> it's, it's a proposal. <laughs> yeah. Which means you, you get to fire me whenever you want. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but at well, this point, you're not going to run okay. away. <laughs> so Between we, now and the next meeting. <laughs> so it would be strictly perfunctory to do it tonight. Whereas if, uh, let me start my motion again. Okay. I, um, I would, I, uh, I move that we continue this action item sure. to one, um, I don't have the date of the meeting, but just like, the, to the next meeting in May. Okay. Is there a second on that motion? Second. All right. Did you want to have a comment? A couple of them. All right. Okay. First of all, um, I do think it would be wise for us to go ahead and appoint the attorney and the judge because we know that's a given. I would also want to be sensitive to Trustee Markle's request for legal. So I think as a board, we could approve his ability to consult with the attorney so that his questions get in. Then we don't need to go into an executive session. But see, like I'm thinking, like if I want to sign something to staff, I'd like to have the board give me support to sign something to staff. So, for instance, when we were recruiting for the police chief, I asked the board if they would let me work closely with the town administrator on recruiting for the police chief. So we've been doing that, and I got a board thing. But what I hear from Trustee Marco is a request to get, and it costs us two twenty-five an hour for our attorney to answer his questions, but he feels so strongly about it that he wants to go in the executive session. Why can't he just have a conversation and we as a board say yes, let him have the conversation with the attorney and get his questions answered. If, if we're going to be conversational and casual, may I? Yes. Sir. Um, my intent was to make expedient use of all of our time. Um, we have the opportunity at this moment to all understand the, the problem we already have our attorney on hand gotcha. it seemed um, like a good idea at the time mm -hmm. um, apparently not everybody agreed with that but um, I think that as long as like I said we can talk okay. yes. I was gonna say, I, not knowing what your questions are I right. would love want the board to have the benefit of the answers to whatever those questions are mm -hmm. um, also sometimes it might be helpful for me to have them in advance so I can you know I might need to research or something or another so uh, Maybe the, if the board would like, it could direct um, Mr. Markle to submit his questions either directly to me or through Corinne to me, and then there could be an executive session where we could review those questions at the next at the next meeting. 
and while I'm talking about the next meeting, um, uh, an associate from my office, Richard, who is, is assisting me with town matters, is going to be at the next meeting. Um, as I previously scheduled to be out of town, so I, I, if we can even do it at the next meeting. He'd be prepared for that. Um, I could submit something in writing to all of the board, depending on the nature of the questions, or if it's something that um, it's preferred that I handle, it could always be at that following the second meeting in May, depending on the timing. Okay. All right. We still we have a motion and a second to continue this item until the next meeting. Is there further discussion on that? Yes, Mr. Sepp. I would like to uh, put out the letters, uh, request for letters of interest for town treasurer at this time, uh, as soon as we can, so that we have more time, because we have 30 days for a limit to try to get uh, um, a treasurer appointed. And I think we, if we can get it by the next meeting, we have no interest then we can make action at the next meeting without long discussion or anything else. Okay, so, yes. I, I'm not sure we are held to the 30-day appointment. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, if we don't have a treasurer, the world doesn't, yeah, it doesn't yeah. come to an end. No, no, no right, it doesn't. Exactly. We've had no and the reason I say time. that is I would like us to have a discussion as a board specifically regarding the treasurer position, because if they are indeed doing everything here, I really think no one is going to do it for $100. Okay. I really think we need to talk about they, and I, they have to be in town, as I understand. Well, it, let's not be, carry on this discussion. No, but but I would like to have it. it. So yeah. I would like to, after this, I'll make a second motion. All right. So <laughs> we have a motion on the table to go ahead and um, continue this item till the next meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. That motion passes. I'd like to make a motion that uh, at the next meeting we have a discussion about how to encourage these uh, how to encourage a citizen to come forward as treasurer okay do I have a second on that much one second all right discussion from the board uh, since I made move I'd like to um, it, on the agenda of that meeting I would like to have the Cindy's job description as well as the town of board the candidates that was put out back in, uh, it was put out 12, 14, 21. It was the treasurer's duties were in an agenda packet for 12, 14, 21. And I believe that's what was on the town website for letters of interest. So if those, both of those could be put in the packet so we can see Cindy's responsibilities and the town treasurer's uh, responsibilities, which I don't know if all these are coming off the statute, I've not checked. And then have the ability to discuss and what's the terminology? Uh, yeah, just, uh, discuss and and yeah, we, we can make a decision about what we want to make a motion. That's what I want. Yeah, exactly. So it'll be an action item. Action item. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right. Any further discussion from the board? All right. Is anything from the public? Yes, Ms. Um. I guess um, maybe this can be broached. And when I read statute, it seems like the statutory duties for a treasurer are kind of extensive. And I don't know, are we really, can we make sure we really pull those together? And then from what I heard Jeff Conklin say tonight is, it's just kind of like a wink wink thing. It's okay if you just have someone else do it. So I'm kind of confused because can we do that for any of the appointed positions? <laughs> You, can you just have an executive secretary instead of a, a clerk as long as you just have like a, a figurehead of a clerk? And then one final question is who was the treasurer when Kristen Chesnick was the finance officer? Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Anything else? All right. We have a motion on the table to put the oh I'm sorry, Ms. Patterson, I didn't see your hand. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle Patterson. I just want to confirm the motion. Uh, what I have written down is action item at the next meeting to encourage someone to come forward as treasurer along with a copy of the current finance officer job description and the treasurer's duties that were posted to the website Page. December 14th, 21. Is that accurate? No, that is not accurate. So the, okay. the, it is. Well, actually, but the agenda <laughs> item, the motion is to put the treasurer position 
as an action item on the next agenda. <laughs> Restate it. Yes. Yeah. Let me I'll restate it. Yes. Because yes. she really <laughs> that yeah, we don't need all that. No, no, and that's why I said that's not a good motion. <laughs> no. Um, I would like uh, to make a motion that we add an agenda item to the next meeting to discuss the treasurer position and encouraging Well, we don't have no, to, to just discuss the yes. treasurer position and yes. add an action item. Yes. Okay. And we have a second on that. Yes. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right, that motion passes. Good. All right, the next item is. Before we move on there, may yeah. I have a motion directing my authority to contact oh, Mr. Yes. Thank you, thank Mr. Thank Michael. You. Thanks. I'd like to make a motion that we um, give um, Trustee Marco the authority to consult the town attorney. All right, we have a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. All right. That motion passes. Okay. All right. Thank you. So now the next agenda item is the discussion of legacy events within the town sponsorship of fees. Three legacy events in this town, and that is Cherry Days, the BMW Rally, and well, actually four now with Picking yeah. in the Park and. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I think I remember that one. And. So, how much do we want to discuss this tonight? I mean, we need to come up with policy for sure. And we need to decide what we're going to do about these legacy events and then to decide what we're going to do about other events because like the Arbol um, uh, Market in Town Park is another event that was initiated last year that may eventually become a legacy event is, you know, the discussion is to, do we want to include something like Arbol Market? which does bring revenues to the town and brings people to the town. Or um, I know the Creative, Co not the Creative Coalition, but uh, elsewhere has done events, as has the Learning Council, and they have come forward asking for the same kind of relief from fees. So we really do need to come up with some kind of policy on this. Yes, Mr. Mark. My understanding is this is an informal discussion? This is, at, yes, it We're is. We're not going to have motions and. We can no, probably not, but you know, recognize still need to get okay. recognized. Very well. Um, I think that uh, your language that you just used uh, is, speaks to the matter, uh, the, the heart of the matter. Um, you just mentioned revenues and people as things uh, that are uh, brought to town due to these events. And uh, perhaps we should consider the benefit to the community rather than the revenues or the, the guests. And um, I may have, uh, uh, I do have a conflict of interest in uh, these items because I am an innkeeper in town. So I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I could interrupt this minute. I didn't, I have a hearing defect, so I did not uh, hear what the conflict Okay, I, I have a conflict of interest because I, my business is dealing with tourists Overnight, I'm an innkeeper, right? So um, we have to caution me if I begin to tread on um, uh, unethical waters. But uh, the way that I see it is that the first time that I came to an event in Town Park, I was I fell in love with this town, right? And the people that have made the efforts to make these things happen and create events that are open to the public where all of us can participate freely without charge at our own time and it's such high quality stuff that you get in this town like everybody loves it. you can tell that there's so much love put into it i think that measuring things by revenues and people at some point we have to make a judgment call we can't say well if you're if your event brings in 500 people then you get a discount right and then well you know somebody's thing didn't come through this year and they got 400 people now they got to kick us a bunch of money right having hard and fast terms like this um is not why we're here necessarily we're here to to make decisions right to make to to make judgments and determine what we think is important and I think that things like this 
um, are important to me, not as a business owner, but as a citizen of this town. Thank you. Yeah, point well taken. And, yeah, and I think you can't reduce things to numbers a lot of times. And that it ends up just diluting the whole thing and trivializing it. Yes, Mr. Seth. I lived in town for 32 years and watched these these uh, events evolve and come into being. And I fully support them personally as a citizen. But I'm very uncomfortable about giving public money to uh, a, uh, an organization so they can have their event. Um, most of these events have uh, vendors and perhaps a fee to the vendors so that we we can make a discount, but it's it's hard to take public money out and give public money away. And perhaps if we had this as a budget item and that was a way that we did this, that's probably the better way to handle this. Um, we set a specific amount of money and that when that's gone, that's it. Um, I'm concerned because we do have a slight budget crisis this year. Um, it's not gonna get any better. And I'm really concerned about public money spent at this point. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Other comments? Yeah. Um, I was wondering if I could get a couple questions answered that were uh, included in the packet in terms of the finances that, that uh, you all provided. Um, my first question was, uh, people get a $50 discount for recycling, and I wondered how is that done? Does Do the volunteers actually take the materials to recycle? I'm sorry, point of work. I think I think uh, you're talking about the specific. Mm -hmm. uh, my understanding is we're discussing the. But this the is broad, this, this this is part of the questions I want answered in terms of how much money do we spend bef before we yeah, give yeah, up. The, I think this is this okay. is a valid you thing to have in the discussion. Centers. No, to me, I think getting yeah. some questions answered about this is part of the entire discussion. Well, the, the reason I ask is because um, the. Application for picking in the park has a refund of two hundred dollars, fifty dollars for a recycling fee um, for all four nights, and that's not on this itemization on page thirty-one. So I just wanted to verify that that's true, fifty dollars. So they really, right now, picking in the park is looking at paying two hundred dollars, is how it looks from their application. And so I, I just want to know logistically, does any town staff, do any town staff deal with the recycling or is Rob Miller going to take that to J&J &J disposal? I pay the oh, I should. <laughs> All right. The, the, the um, entity that utilizes the park takes care of the removal of the recycling. Okay, so that's, and, and then secondly, I noticed that um, some of the numbers changed from the last packet to this packet. And what we're looking at here, um, another question I had is why is administration, why, why is there a 225 fee that the town is paying for the special event liquor license? Is that money we have to pay or is that coming off? Is that? That's uh, assessing the time that the town is processing the liquor license. Oh, okay. All right, so right now, if for the four nights for picking in the park, approximate cost is $3,030. The town is only going to ask for $200 from picking in the park. That's accurate. Right. Because their events are not consecutive, that's right. why they get the $50 charge. Yeah. So really, when you even look at the other ones, to me, the fee is not that much. And, and I would kind of like, we have to deal with this year, because we don't, unless... We could amend the budget to, to deal with this this year because we're going to have to do some budget amendment, in my opinion. Um, I, it, here's my second piece. So for these four nights, the town is picking up $33,000 minus $200. So let's say $2,800 for those four nights, which is, um, I'm a, my husband, oh, full disclosure, my husband and I give money to big men. So we are big supporters. Um, but that means for every event we can plan on, let's just say, uh, for three days, for cherry days, or so we're looking at approximately the same, maybe even more like 4,000? Theirs are a little more. Yeah, and they may only be asked to pay, I don't know, 
you know, what was it a day? Two hundred dollars a day? Three hundred? I'm just trying to weigh this. If we, we, th this is what I'd like to know. For those legacy events, we know how long they would be. Can you estimate how much money we are going to be spending if we waive fees for the existing legacy events that we have waived for in the past? Do you have an estimate? I, I don't have an estimate, but I can give you one. Well, because that's kind of what I would like to know. How much public money are we spending waiving the fees? Okay. Um, because I don't know. Okay. And I think that's important to know given. But here is a second thing I'd like to offer. I know Rob Miller is trying to get his posters right. finished. So right. here's what I would like to propose. Well, it's another agenda item. So oh, no, no, no. I, I would like to offer something right now to take care of this for Rob well, Miller. Let's, let's deal with the agenda item. Let's finish our discussion okay. and carry on with that. Okay. Um, I kind of want to think what Paige has to say. Um, but, uh, okay. So, uh, Total income would be good, uh, a good number to have uh, for all these events. Um, but I want to make sure that we're talking about uh, it doesn't cost the town money. It's an opportunity cost, right? The money that we don't collect is not taken out of the town coffers. Right. Right. It's money that's not put in. And I know mathematically that ends up being the same, but I think that's an important distinction that uh, the costs associated with events like this are not necessarily going to be um, three thousand and thirty dollars, and I really take issue with a lot of these estimates because I think that they have estimated very high. Like this would be an absolute maximum ceiling. Uh, specifically, um, I noticed that we have thirty-two hours times two staff members indicates that this is going to be full-time work for two guys every day for each day that it occurs. I think that that might be overestimating. I don't think that these guys aren't going to do anything else for those four days. Um, I know, Corinne. Thank you. Um, the previous estimate for cleaning supplies was $250 a year. Um, we have cleaning supplies of $120 for these four events. Um, we have trash can liners of uh, 100 bucks. That's 200 bags of trash can liners. I don't know if we're going through that many. That seems like insanely high. Uh, the trash, uh, for one, uh, three tons of trash at the dump is $135, not $165. And if these numbers are correct, then uh, each person is going to be making four pounds of trash for these events. Uh, I thought about bringing a trash bag of recycling bottles and cans. Two pound trash bag is like a kitchen size trash bag. So this is asserting that every single person generously uh, or conservatively will be producing a, a half a kitchen bag full of trash each time we show up to pick in the park, all of us, right? A fuel estimate of $300 even at $5.50 a gallon, you get 54 gallons of gas out of $300, or diesel, say, I assume this is for the trash truck. Even if you go five miles per gallon with those 56 gallons, you get 272 miles, which is five round trips to the dump. That number is way too high. That's insane. There's no way that's correct, okay? Um, it's, a very, very high estimate, right? Okay. So, so I want to caution us against using these numbers, and I think that really that's the, the core of the situation is what are we giving up to have these things happen, right? And some of us give up, give up personal things. Uh, some of us give up money. Uh, I support Rob uh, particularly with uh, bands. We host bands for him. Um, and it costs me all the other reservations that I have. I actually texted him today about it um, because I was like, hey man, are you gonna have any rooms for these days, you know? Um, but I'm happy to support him because I love the result of what he does, right? And if you guys feel the same way, I think it's a pretty simple thing to say, we all feel the same. Let's act on that. Well, my suggestion is that we have the town administrator write up a generalized policy saying that for these events, we will waive fees 
and that give us some criteria for events that we won't rate, rate fees for. And we can address the next okay. meeting. We can take a look at it. No, I think that's a, a, a really good way to approach the problem. Do the opposite. What, what do we charge for? Rick mentioned the vendors, right? Um, I think is a really good point. If people are sitting there making money and it's a commercial operation, the people are charging fees. Well, they're charging you know? sales tax, and then the vendors right. usually right. pay the event to have right. their booth right. at the event. Yeah, um, most of these are all these are nonprofit, right? Maybe that's a good. I, I maybe that's so. a good. Um, or yeah, just criteria has yeah. to be a nonprofit. Right. Yeah. Well, and I think yeah, if uh, the town administrator is willing, just write up a draft thing we can work on. All right. Anyone want to contribute anything else? Yeah. Um, well, I think your initial statement about we have four legacy events, Cherry Days, Pick and Mountain Harvest, and BMW, those are pretty clear benefits to the community. The BMW rally invites all of us as community members to come in. Um, Cherry Days, Pick and Mountain Harvest are just fabulous things that are really well attended by local people, don't necessarily bring people. In. I also want to speak on behalf of BMW because some of the key current members of our community have moved here because of that event. So those are four of our legacy events, and I think we could make a decision about, you know, hey, these are the legacy events, now let's get a policy together for everything that is in the legacy. Yeah, well, and that's right, the draft policy, yeah. I think, would be a good idea. And the other thing is, when I was on the Mountain Harvest Board, Bill Bishop every year, a year did an uh, economic summary of what that Band brought into the town. And the last year I was on that board, they brought in over five hundred thousand dollars into this community. We get that money. Um, it's old. Bill I mean, I mean, for what this next year? If he does it every year, I don't he's, know. he's he's gone. This he oh, oh, he's gone. Sorry. He's gone. Yeah, he's he gone. did. Sorry. He did it when he was on the board, gotcha. and it really was a wonderful thing. He had an economics degree, and so mm -hmm. he was able to calculate this. Mm -hmm. But if you figure, and Mountain Harvest has grown since that time, if the park is bringing in half a million dollars into this community for people coming in and eating in the restaurants and working at the vendors and all the rest of the stuff they do. Mm -hmm. The fee is minimal. All right. Could, could I ask one last thing? One last thing. None of the, nothing in here is talking about park maintenance. And I think of the, the greatest importance is that that park be kept up and it be kept in good shape because this does have an impact. And I know we have Corey who's new at it and I just would implore that the staff make that uh, a priority this summer and get the water out there as soon as you can. I know we just turned our ditch on from uh, Stewart today. We are working on that and uh, park maintenance time is included in the man hours. Oh, okay. Not oh, just oh. event. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I just move on then to item number four, Mr. Miller's picking in the park event and waiving the fees for that. Yeah. Yes. Before you move, yeah. Can I speak Discussion? on the part, the legacy sure. events? Christina Patterson. I know, um, like at Christmas time, there's a fund, and I don't know if it's five thousand or seven thousand that Corinne generally uh, designates to go to nonprofits. Does anybody oh, remember that on the board? A, it's in a budget. We have a budget. It's in a budget. Item. And I would ask the trustees to just look at that and maybe just keep that in the community. Maybe that, I don't know, is it 5,000 or 7,000? Does anybody know? Oh, I don't remember. If, I can't remember. Yeah. I'm sure someone. It, it's not a very large one. I think it's at least five or 7,000. And I would ask that you just look at that and reevaluate where you want the public's money. Thank you so much, Ms. Salter, for keeping that perspective. The public's money to go. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yes, Ms. Watt. Remember how with space to create, um, you were able to set up a fund for people to donate if they cared a lot about it. Wasn't wasn't that something that we have with the, or the park no. project in Polis Park? Yeah, the Polis Park okay. project. Was Is there because... some way to make a vehicle for like um, friends of park or whatever? So these legacy events, which do bring a lot of people on this very small piece of property, Town Park, and they do do a lot of wear and tear. But is there some vehicle that if people were passionate about it, they could donate extra money and pay that fee for the legacy events or chip in? And so there'd be a little bit of money there so you don't actually have to ask the event, but there were people who would be passionate about supporting them in this town that would donate money um, to some sort of a 
town fund to go to the park um, to cover some of the costs for specifically for that event. And it's just a thought. I don't know legal if, legally if it's possible, but um, so, right, thank you. Know, you. Thanks. Crowdsourcing. All right, Mr. Miller. <laughs> He's so patient. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Rob Miller, 211 North Narga. Um, thank you guys for bringing up this, um, this topic. Um, a few things, uh, Mr. Stelter. First of all, I agree with you. We should have a line item in the budget. That's something I brought up about 14 years ago uh, in a budget meeting, and there was no room for that at the time. Hopefully, that will change. Um, I would love to see the breakdown that um, the staff put together, the per show breakdown. I, I wasn't sent it, I, I haven't seen it. Thank you. Um, but it um, it does sound high. And I will just say even the idea of, um, Mr. Markle said two days of full-time work, I don't see anybody. And I and when, with picking in the park, we leave the park, there is not a, um, a bubble gum wrapper in the park at the by the time we're done. So I don't know what that would be. Um, but that kind of brings me to what I'd like to see for all these legacy events. Um, I work with different towns. I work with Noah, Utah, and Ridgeway, and um, I work with URA. And the way they all operate with events is they, <clears throat> they approach the people putting on the events, and they ask what, what we need and how they can work with us. And Travis has been the guy for the last bunch of, bunch of years, and um, Mike, the, um, the parks guy before him, and the woman before him. Um, those guys were great. They were parks people, and, they, and I interacted with them. But Travis um, gave us no support unless I asked for it, and it was always um, not very friendly. And what I'm looking for, um, and I know that all of the events are looking for, is to feel supported by the town. And I'm not even talking about financially. I mean, this, this conversation is based around, um, um, Paige, you, you had brought $200. I'm not sure what that number is, but <clears throat> in my memory, I feel like what I, what I paid for the park for the four shows is around 450. We can talk about that or suss it out, but whether it's two or 450, really that number is not really why we're here talking tonight. <clears throat> Why we're here is because last year I, I came up here and I said to you guys, I want support from the town. I want to feel supported by 15 years of doing this event. I'm now working with Mountain Harvest, so I, I'm starting to speak for Mountain Harvest also. I know that Cherry Days. The other thing about my voice, which I think is a little bit unique in this conversation, is that, you know, picking in the park, we're going into the 15th year of doing this. The other events, BMW is run by people who live in Denver. Um, uh, Charity Days has had countless people running it. Mountain Harvest, same thing, brand new people this year. Um, I'm the only one who's actually seen this thing through for the last 15 years. So I, I feel like I'm in a little bit of a groundhog day in terms of um, <laughs> just trying to get support from you guys. I gave up for a good 10 years. And I feel like I, I, I've been inspired by the energy of the board. Your time is up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sorry. I move to give Rob another three minutes. I'll okay. second that. I, don't I, know, I, I appreciate you. that. I don't really I, need I, it, but I think you guys, but specifically, if I could just name a few things. The thing that really drove me here last year was the, the being charged $50 for the cones. I was like, okay, that's the straw, okay? I need cones because what I'm trying to do is create safety for um, the porta potties that I have on the street so people have to go to the bathroom. And I, cars are driving by, so I want to put cones there so they don't get hit. And then out of nowhere, I got a $50 fee. And then when I asked about it, they said, you've been charged a $50 fee all along, and I never had been charged. But So I don't know, I, you know, it's different people, it's different every year. So I, I want to be able to ask for cones. I mean, why am I getting charged for cones? You know, for cones, they're just things. Um, if the electric goes out on the stage, I don't know how to handle it. My sound guy can do it. But if we don't know, I want to be able to call someone and them show up and be like, hey, it's a, this, you know. Um, and the trash cans. And, and I feel like that's kind of a, a big one that I don't, like wasn't able to really ever have a conversation with Travis about it because he just sort of shrugged it off. But what happens is the trash cans are put out um, in the places that they're put out just like every other day of the year. 
And what I would like is for them to, first of all, I'd like a few extras if they're, if they're available. I think they are, but I don't know. I would love a few extras and I'd love to talk to them about placing. I'd love to have a, communi a person I can communicate with who could say, hey, where do you want them every week? We'll just put them there. And that would be great. And then, and then have some communication about the trash being picked up also. Because there seems to be every year a different, the town wants it something different. And I'm only notified after I did something wrong, basically. So I, I guess what I'm asking for you guys is like, I, that all boils down to communication. But again, support. I just want to feel like you guys, and I, I know verbally we're all on the same page in terms of wanting to support these series. Is, but I think that each of these events would love like a point person who feels like they're really getting support, you know? Uh, you'll be up in a get again. Uh, yeah, and that's, you, you know, but, oh, I think, but I think I'm speaking to this. this yeah. 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 All right, thank you. All right. Anyone else? Yes, Michelle. Michelle Patterson, 302 Second. Um, just a couple of things. The, the comment about keeping the park in good condition and the wear on the park, I appreciate that and understand that, but I can't think of a single better use of our park than to bring the community together for an event. And so I, I don't think we should be punishing, essentially, events that do that with increased cost. Uh, because that's what better use of the park is there. The park is here for our community. Um, and I've forgotten my other comment. No offense to Ms. Patterson. Uh, I understand this is an action item. Pardon? I understand this is an action item. No, but this is this was just a discussion item. The next one, when Mr. Miller comes up here. Oh, I thought we had transferred to his. No, okay. no, he's. My apologies. Yeah, I was trying to close up the discussion. Oh, we had a couple of things. So, Mr. Miller, <laughs> you're back. Is there anything you want to add before we make a vote on uh, waiving of your fees? No. All right. So, would you like to make a motion? <laughs> I'd like to make a motion. This may be unorthodox, but I move that Shane and Paige Smith will pay the fee required for picking in the park because if we waive a fee tonight, we have already made okay. a precedent. Okay. <laughs> Is there a I'll second that. All right. I'm so Discussion <laughs> from the board? <laughs> A lawyer speaks up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's my job. I, it is. I know. And, uh, that, uh, I don't know that the board can read through the motion like this. Okay. To that it yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, you know, it's a lot. Putting this out there, you, you, you could work it out that, that you could pay the fee and not well, miss, you could just make, say as part of the record that like maybe. Whatever if works. the fee is not waived, I intend to cover that. Well, and like that, that let is. me, mostly, I'm not comfortable waiving the fee tonight. Okay. Because why are we having the, the information next meeting? Mm -hmm. So that, to me, we are big supporters, and that would solve not setting a precedent. So however you think it could be done, Jeff? I think you could, uh, you've made a representation on the here that you know you tend to work to pay in the event the fee is not waived that you would pay the you you would like to pay that fee that's not something the board's taking action on the okay. whether the fee is waived or not and then you can you guys can work it out but for that fee make it, make it. all right then why don't we get a motion to waive the fee and then mm -hmm. or or not no do not waive the fee okay yes mr martin it moves that we do not waive the fee for no you have to do a positive uh, yeah. no no, that would work? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll move that we do not waive the fee. All right. We're going to park for 2020. All right. We have a second? I will second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Me. All right. That motion passes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. If I, as a citizen, if I could just get some clarity. Um, so where is the conversation going? Then? So we're going to make a policy. That's the thing. It's the next meeting where we'll have a draft policy on what we're going to do about waiving fees for legacy. And I would like to see, excuse me. Yeah. I would like to see that we get it on a line item on the budget. Right. And, and so that we have it very clear. It's we don't have any problems. Right. Um, it should be on the budget, even though I know it's kind of an illusory thing, but that income is put onto the budget. Yeah. So I, we need so, to deal with it. Or we take yeah take that income off. Right. So yes, Mr. Mark. 
Um, I have a couple of cursory motions related to this item. Okay. This would be appropriate time to make them. Sure. Thank you. Um, I move to uh, direct staff to make all town documents available as fillable PDFs on the town website, printed only on request. Okay. All town documents as fillable PDFs on the website. Yeah. Right? And Yes, and in the future, uh, Mayor, if you would like my uh, motions to be written down. That would be very much appreciated. Um, I would prefer not to do them live, but I will be reading from what I've typed, and I'll be happy to provide that for the record. That would be perfect. Okay. Yes, thank, thank you very much. All right, do we have a second on that? I'll second that. Discussion from the board? Yes. Um, I'm a little concerned that there's a lot of documents in the town and all documents. I'm thinking about staff time and what staff has to do in order to produce. Put all documents in a PDF, scan them, and put them on the website. That's cool. There's, do we want to see every single water bill in town? Do we want to no. see every, you know? This is I'm for applications, is what, what this is. I'm not understanding your motion because all okay. documents are so broad. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll add some clarity. Um, uh, Make all town documents granted. Thank you. Um, I, I'll modify my motion uh, to make all town forms for the public oh, okay. available as fillable PDFs on the town website, printed only on request. Okay, I have I'll second that. All right. Okay. All right. So, all in favor of making it forms instead of documents? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. That passes. All right. So, further discussion on this. I just wanted to ask about this. So in other words, if I need a building, if I want to get a building permit, or I want to get a fence permit, or things like that, I can now go on the website and there's a fillable form that I can do. And, yeah. And I, I want to be uh, make one clarification. There's not a time, a deadline associated with that work okay. in the motion. Oh, I was going to Intentionally. Right. Thank yeah. You. Okay. Um, I, I, I have a second motion. Well, let's take care of this one first. Because we just voted on the amendment, the change to the motion. We didn't vote on the motion itself. Very well. Okay. All right. So all in favor of making all town forms as fillable PDFs printed only on request? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. That motion passes. All right. Next one. Um, uh, secondarily, I move to make all agenda items at regular meetings for action only. Because. All right. Yeah, go ahead and give us your rationale. Um, as, as, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, second. Second. Okay. Um, as we can motion. Um, I would like to have just made the motion for our discussion item. I think that uh, Ms. Patterson presented a perfect solution to it, and we could have fixed it right then. Um, simply make the uh, nonprofit donation part of our budget optionally available to nonprofits that would like to be legacy park users. And we could use that money to wait to cover what we would have collected in their fees. All we have to do is select them as a nonprofit to receive that money. But I was unable to make that motion because it was a discussion item. And I think that discussion can be very productive, but is completely inappropriate in this setting because it's a waste of everybody's time. If we're going to have discussion, we should have committees doing that discussion. We should take our talking time and kind of figuring and throwing ideas around and make that intentional so that when we show up here, we can take action on what we've already talked about. I don't want to sit here until 9.30. I don't even want to show up at all. If we could hash it out and kick this thing out in 15 minutes, you know how happy everybody in this room would be? Can we make that like maybe our goal? So in order to make our regular meetings more expedient, um, if we have everything actionable, anything for discussion, take it offline. Um, we may be able to find solutions much more quickly and be more expedient in our time here. Okay, thank you for that discussion. This other, yes, Ms. Cooper. Well, I think we're um, kind of bleeding into the agenda item on the ad hoc committee that um, Trustee Johns and I worked on so much. Um, one of the things that might be helpful is one of our recommendations was that we have regular council meetings, but once a month we had a work session. 
And that's where we hash things out in that work session. And as a um, council, we would um, determine what that next work session topic would be so that we could, because there is value in going back and forth. I learn a lot from my fellow trustees, and I learn a lot from the public with the comments that we have in that, and it really helps me make a better decision. So I'm not, I don't, I don't think it's wise to say our goal is to make our meetings 15 minutes long, but you know, I, I want to make sure that we're engaged in good dialogues where we can make discerned decisions. And that's why we had made the, the recommendation that we have that, because the thing that's nice about a work session is now it's all of us. There's not this huge separation. We've got the public can talk with us. We don't have to be quite so formal in a work session. If we did that once a month, I think it would really help in relations between us as board members and us as with the public. So that was one of our key recommendations in the next agenda. I think would help. Other comments from the board? Yes, Mr. Just Patrick. one comment, and, and Mr. Markle, this is what you may have met like in the work session. So I just want to make sure that you know we have the open meetings law that we make sure that we observe. And so when we're taking discussions offline, the discussion of the business needs to be in public meetings. So just, Make sure everyone's mindful of that and however this proceeds. Um, um, yeah, that is my understanding that the discussion is to be public. Um, I would just like our time as a group together when we have a noticed meeting of uh, a quorum. So the quorum is here to take action, is how I see it. And so at having an agenda item for discussion only is contrary to our goals as a quorum. Make it other comments? Sure. I think there's a lot in there in that proposal, and I would need to know more. So I put no. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm still up here because I. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I just, I really, I just want to understand, like, where is this going? Because, All right. So we're right how, because you're saying you're going to. I'm taking some procedural motions. I'm sorry. No, it's I'm okay. taking advantage. And I, it it my relates opinion. in a way because I want to know what is going to happen from here because. I'd like to be in the, in the discussion, and I think that the other event should too. I mean, that, that's next meeting. Yep. So that, yes, so that's right. Right. but you're saying before that you're having something, is that? No, so no. next meeting, we're going to have a draft policy about oh, these legacy events. And we're going to talk about we'll discuss, all of it. Yes, we'll yeah, discuss be, about all of that at the next We'll meeting. be able to take action on it at the next right. meeting. Okay. I would like to have done so today. Okay, so I, I should be giving all the other events a heads up. Yes, please, please yes. do. Okay. Yes. All right, thank you. You're welcome. I'm sorry. No, no worries. It's all good. I just did it. All right. All right. Yes, Ms. Watt. Um, one thing that you might want to consider in the policy is we have no such thing in our ordinances or resolutions as a banner permit fee. It's being charged for these events, nonprofits, to put banners up, and perhaps that's another way we just stop. They're being charged something that there's no author authorization that you've never discussed. And so that's another thing that could be waived. Okay. Okay, thanks. All right. So, um, any more discussion on this motion to make all agenda items action items? And personally, I think we don't have to take action on it. It can be actionable item, and we can continue it, or we can do whatever. So it's, yeah, I don't see there's a downside to this. All right, all in favor of making all agenda items action items? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah. All right, that motion passes. All right, let's move on to the, in the eight minutes, see if we can get something done on the ad hoc committee recommendation. I guess that's me. That's you, Mr. Knudsen. Yes, all your hard work. Unless yeah. Mr. Thompson wants to get up and say something. Madam Mayor, facility 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 inspection policy. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed one. I'm sorry. Well, you're not. Okay. I'm driving. All right. So the facilities inspection policy. We have a red line version in here. Comments from the board on the red line version. What page is it on? Uh, page 41. Thank you. I've been jumping around so much. Yeah, no. Um, and the Scribner's error uh, on page 42, part B, section 1, all current and future board trustees. Um, oh, I'm, my mistake. I read board of trustees. Okay. Well, I believe, yeah. 
This was the amended version that we talked about and made the changes. And below, the red line copy is the final copy. One thing I, I have on page yes. 42, there's no definition for reasonable access, okay. time of access, and I think that should be included. Okay, what would you suggest that as being? Uh, 72 hours, no, no more than 72 hours. Is that reasonable, Ms. Ferguson, in order to get the personnel and to make sure the plant is in such a place that within 72 hours, so three days, that the board could have access? Um. I would think if it's business days, yes. Okay. But if you ask on Friday, I can't guarantee that we would have someone on Monday. Okay. Business days is, is acceptable. Okay, Mr. Martin. Um, likewise, unduly, uh, reasonable and unduly. I had both of those as questionable definitions. So if we just change that to uh, 70, uh, three business days? Okay. Um, just to kind of, I mean, the, yeah. you guys can define this however you wish. You know, the term reasonable and unduly are kind of purposely not prescriptive right. because right. circumstances might reasonably allow for quicker or not. Like yeah. if someone that's needed to be there to facilitate a visit is just simply, you know, they're in the hospital or something, you know. So that's to allow for that um, the circumstances. But if you guys wish to put a end mark on it, that's certainly up to you. So because, I'm just wondering because this is a brand new policy being done in resolution, correct? It's a resolution. Yeah. Now, I, I would suggest that maybe we leave this as is and and do a test. And if if I ask for Corinne to let me in some place and I feel it's gone on too long, I'm gonna let her know and then I will suggest we change the resolution. Okay. I don't know. That's, okay. that's okay. since yeah. this is all, all right. brand new. So you want to make a motion? Okay. Uh, this? Let's see. Yes. Um, yes. Is what? there? <laughs> and I, I'm just checking if I, I didn't. Don't it just it would be resolution 04 yep. Right. I, I move that we accept, adopt resolution. 04. Oh, thank you. 04 four dash twenty twenty. Two Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> All right. Do I have a second? I'll second. Discussion from the board further? No? From the public? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Now you have four minutes. <laughs> well, there's there's quite a lot to unpack. Yes, there's some quite a lot of that yeah. we have. Yeah. Um, there's been really excellent uh, comments by members of the public that have given to us in writing about pros and cons of some of the things that we've suggested. I don't think all of you had a chance to read the public comments or to read the document itself to make a decision tonight. But both of us are here that work so hard on this. So if you have questions for us that would help you make a decision, we can use our four minutes to answer any questions. Okay, questions from the board. Uh, <laughs> well, I have them, but the first, what page are we on? No, oh, it's, let's, let's just, can I just talk? <laughs> so, yeah. here's, here's what I'd like. Thank you. Here's philosophy. Okay. Part of the way this is designed is to prevent embarrassment to people who come before the board. And I've had that from more than one public member who has come here on behalf of an organization to make a presentation to the board and has been subject to grilling by the public. And so what I wanted to do is, in those cases, they're trying to make a presentation. And they should be given the floor to be able to make that presentation. And if there are public comments, those are appropriate when we're ready to make an action on that. That's when we take public comment. But during their presentation, they could at least air their thing, like our, our people from the ditch company, came in, make a presentation to the board about what they're trying to do, what the wetlands are, questions they might have, those kind of things. And then when it becomes an action item, then the public weighs in. So that was one thought, because I was moved by that, by the person that said, boy, I had no idea that I was going to have this kind of public, I didn't know it was a public hearing. You know, so that was one thought. The second thought was the idea of when do we have time to really engage with the public in more of a conversation, discussion way, and I've already mentioned to you about this concept of having a work session 
once a month, we as a board decide what that future topic will be. And then we can really engage and have dialogue with the public about that and among ourselves. And, yeah. and, and you're suggesting, because what you said about the work session contradicted what's in here about public comment during the work session. Um, because there's two different things. It's a presentation made to the board. Mayor, I'll move that we extend the meeting half an hour, and I entreat. No, if they leave, they're leaving. I, I know. I, I, I move that we meet, extend the meeting half an hour. Okay, is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Uh, may I speak to it? Yeah. Um, I feel like we're having a really good discussion. I don't want it to end. I entreat you to stay, Dave and John. Okay. We have a motion on the board to extend the meeting by half an hour. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Yeah. All right. Well, it passes. It passes. So, well, they can't force me to stay. No, they can't force you to stay. <laughs> we will not be able to take action. On well, this I, I would like to make a motion that we take this discussion and that we continue this meeting on Monday and at 6.30 and we take care of all the business we have not and taken care of. this is the only thing. Now. This is right. the only thing. I second that. Done. Well, we have staff reports and that right. kind yes. of too. Mm -hmm. And we really need to get the business of the town done. Special meeting mm -hmm. on Monday. What time? Monday at 6.30. Can that be properly noticed? Yes. Yeah, can that be properly noticed? Yes. If we put it up tonight, it will be properly noticed. 24 hours to notice, correct? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so we have a time again? 6.30 on Monday, and the date is? Second. The second, May 2nd. All right, can we have a motion? Did we get a second on that? Yes. yes. All right. Seconded. Further discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. All right, that motion passes. I guess we're meeting Monday evening at 6.30. All right, it is 9.30 and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you again. Actually, no, it's not. We voted to extend. Okay. We're still in session. Oh. We no longer have a quorum. There is <laughs> and we're having we're going to discuss all the items at meeting on Monday, so there is no reason to continue this. Dave, meeting. we can just do it right now. <laughs> talk I, about it. Do. I don't make good decisions. I was vibing with you, man. I was vibing with you.